Resurrection 2024 Mercy Conference. Hallelujah! I'll read a scripture to us and I'll allow us to do what is needful. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Can you have us projected? Have you projected? Hallelujah! Help me with the NIV. I want to show us something. We are going to release a sound this evening. Are we ready? Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 NIV I'll read from here he says from them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing I will add to their numbers and they will not be decreased I will bring them honor and they will not be disdained when Mary got to the tomb that morning I know she left with a sound and it was a sound of celebration. We are going to now release a sound. I want you to position yourself well. Because at this conference, all we are doing is rejoicing. Why? Because the resurrection of Jesus could not be stopped. That means your resurrection cannot be stopped. Are you ready to lift up a sound? Instrumentalist, when I shout Jesus is alive, you release a sound of rejoicing. Are you ready? All over this place, Jesus is alive.
Wherever you are, can you just begin to press in the spirit? Shetevele kaplan tosa bevile, ratevele kam tosa vai. Ite si van to beleanos, shetevele bevile kosi, ite lehe. I, you are glorious. So glorious in your way, yeah. you are glorious. So glorious in your way, I, yeah. you are glorious. So glorious in your way, you should not have a so glorious, so glorious in your way. You are glorious in your way. For everything that He has been doing. Blind eyes open when you are. 
receive the resurrection power of Jesus here at the resurrection conference of the household of David. Do we have people that have seen the resurrection power of Jesus in the house this evening? Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hey, are you excited this evening? How was day one? Day two? Day three? How was this morning session? How will this evening's session be? Hallelujah. Let's read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 to 3, before we'll take our hymn in concert. It says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed. Who is the anointed this evening? We are the anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, and to lose the armor of kings, to open before him what? The double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. And the Lord says to someone this evening, I will go before you. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. And I will give to you the word treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by name, I am the God of Israel and I am the God of the household of David. If you know that this is you, that this scripture is talking about, open your mouth and say, I have received treasures of darkness. The resurrection power of Jesus is alive. It is working in me and it cannot be what? It cannot be stopped. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Look to your right and to your left and say, you are welcome to day four of the resurrection conference. You will not live here the same way you came in the name of Jesus. All right, choir will lead us right now in the hymn for the evening. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are never, never weary of the grand old song. Come on, say, we are never, we are never, never weary of the glory to God. We can sing it loud as ever, with our faith even more strong. Glory to God.
give the Lord a shout of praise. If indeed you know that we are in the palace of the King, our way is going bright. Because what? Your resurrection, my resurrection, our, what? Our resurrection, what? It is here. And look to your neighbor and say what? It cannot be what? It cannot be what? It cannot be stopped. Take your seat and be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I want to welcome you to the fourth evening of Mercy Conference 2024. Hallelujah. Um, I, I trust that you've been having a fantastic time. God has been visiting us in very, very powerful and maybe to use the word strange ways, isn't it? God is good all the time. All right. I want us to listen to the following um, announcements very quickly. Um, Mercy Conference 2024 continues tomorrow. Um, okay, you want to clap? Okay. The venue is Police College, right? Police College. The time is 7 a.m. Somebody say 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Mercy Conference continues. Um, and um, it's at Obakin Jobi. Okay, the address is projected on the screen. Obakin Jobi Way, Ikeja GRA, Lagos. Um, the place is already set and ready for us. Amen. It's going to be the grand finale of Mercy Conference 2024. So make it a date with God. Make sure you invite and bring enough people um, to be blessed. Amen. Um, if you are not very conversant with this facility and you want to use the restroom, please, you can speak to any of the officials or you can locate the restroom to yourself. It's just behind this auditorium. Amen. Um, also, um, the food court is running. So, um, after the service, before you go home, if you want to grab something very quickly, please you can. Amen. And um, you would be blessed. Praise God. Um, this is the household of David. You can follow us on all our social media, uh, media platforms. Rather, um, We have our YouTube channel. You can subscribe and follow us so that you get notifications of our messages. We have all the messages preached at this conference. Pastor has admonished us to listen to them over and over again. Um, and previous messy conferences. Amen. And also Pastor Shala's messages are available on our channel too. Um, or you can just visit our website www.householdofdavid.org um, to know a lot more about this great ministry. And if you're worshiping with us this evening from anywhere else in the world, we want to say Thank you for joining us. Welcome, and you will be blessed tonight massively in Jesus' precious name. All right, it is my singular joy and privilege to welcome the senior pastor of the household of David, Pastor Shala. Okay, he's not yet out. All right, sorry, I, Pastor Shala is not yet out. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the time where you think about something to say. You know those times in conferences, right? You think about something to say. Now, the truth is this. Now, if you've, been following, if you've been following this conference from the very first day, Wednesday the 31st, one of the things you would observe is that all the ministers are practically pointing us in a particular direction. You agree with that? You agree with that? And so and I've heard that to really hear something, it's important you listen to it at least 16 times especially when it's a message, right? So my very strong admonition to us this evening is that you get the messages um, and listen to them. Make sure you drown yourself in them. Listen to them over and over. You'll be shocked that there are lots of things that you thought you heard that you did not hear. Amen. And one thing that would happen to you is transformation. And that is the signature of God upon 
this ministry. We would like you to share your testimonies with us. We know that God is touching you um, in every one of the sessions. Please share your testimonies with us, rather, by sending an email to testimonies at householdofdavid.org. Amen? Testimonies at householdofdavid.org. Um, and you, your testimonies will bless us and will share your testimonies with um, the world and other people. Amen? So that other people can be blessed and their faith can be built up. So it's a good time in the conference to welcome the senior pastor of the household of David. <laughs> Can you put your hands together for Jesus as we welcome Pastor Shala Shumakinde? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so he's been struggling. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was on call with... Uh, Reverend Dr. Olubio, I know there are some senior, uh, some fathers that you don't say I have to go. You just wait till they release you. And was telling me that he spoke with Papa, with Papa at uh, Bishop Redeco yesterday about what happened, and Papa said he should send a message to us that he himself will reach out to us later. So saying all that, I wasn't going to say, excuse me, sir, uh, they are waiting for me. <laughs> Whoever is waiting must wait. <laughs> Not even when they mention Papa. All right, yeah, well, this conversation will go as long as. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what next are we doing? <laughs> we are supposed to have. Um, let me say this about. I wanted to do this last year during the Higher Grand Conference. But we couldn't because at that time, my pastor was here to be laid to rest. And um, I decided this time around, for those who are watching, I just want to say, one day, I had the privilege of seeing some of the leading ministers in the country by divine arrangements. And um, so after seeing, I don't want to mention names, um, but these are... When you talk about the top three, four men of God in the country, in terms of ministry, age, and everything. So, after seeing them, then I came back and I just came to see Pastor. I was ordained by Pastor Taiwo when this ministry clock one year. I met him when I was going to serve as a copper. I served in Cardinal. You know, the Bible says, don't know to God that all this was before the foundation of the earth, Acts 15, 18. I wanted to, when I got my call-up letter, I wanted to travel to Kaduna to go and do my NYSC. And it turned out to be that no direct vehicle from Abeokuta to Kaduna. I grew up in Abeokuta. I went to University of Ibadan. So I now decided to go to Ibadan, to be able to travel from Ibadan to Kaduna. There was a direct station wagon and some cars from Ibarra to Kaduna. So in order to make the journey very early, I traveled to about a day before, so that early in the morning in Ojo, I would now travel to Kaduna. As I got to UI, I was supposed to travel Wednesday morning or so. So I got to UI Tuesday evening, around 4 p.m. When I entered the gates of UI, my phone just rang. I was the president of the Joint Christian Fellowship University, but that's about 36 fellowship put together. And then, um, the person I handed over to just call. Now, Pastor Shola, are you around? I said, I just, I'm just entering UI gates now. Who told you? He said, Pastor Tai Wodukoya is around. The Christian body is hosting him today. And we are going to meet him at the hotel to bring him to school now. Would you like to go with us? Ah. I said, really? I said, why? That I've been hearing about the man. I've never met him. I said, so I would like to go. So I joined and as soon as I got there, Pao Taiwo just kept talking to me over and over again. Then I said, I'll be traveling to West West Kaduna. So I grew up in the North. I grew up in Kaduna. And then they said, when you get there, call me. I would met Pastor Bimba before then. She preached when I was in my final year for us. I invited her. She came. Then in Abel Kuta, before I went to serve, I invited her again. Cultural Center, Abel Kuta, she came. Where we had over 1,500 people. I was just a young guy then on my way to go and serve. I just decided to have that city-wide conference. And Pastor Boy came. So I was already very close to her. 
The only time I could have met Pastor Taiwo was one day, I was pastoring about for over six hours in her study. So I imagine my husband is around, so she ran out to go and welcome Pastor. She came back. Then she said, Pastor went up to pray, then I left. So I didn't really meet him. So I told Pastor that story that day. So when I was, after the orientation camp, I came back to Lagos, I went to see him, and from that day. Um, so when the church started, it was only when I went to see initially. And then when we were one, he came around to pray and to inaugurate the church. So after many years of seeing many people, I don't know, I just went to his house one day and I said, sir, you know, I want to tell you something. That I've been privileged to meet a lot of popular, wonderful ministers and they have blessed me tremendously. I said, but God told me that you are my pastor, and I should remember that. Pastor became very emotional that day. He sat back in the house in Jira, and he kept looking at me. Then he prayed that day. That was just about two years ago or three. And something entered my life that day. Because before I did that, I was to see Dr. Nature one day, and at the front of Dr. Nature, I just about to say, I'm about to see Dr. Nature. I said, ah, no problem. Please let him pray for you. And interestingly, when I saw Dr. Nature, the first thing he did was to pull out his phone and to call Pastor Taiwo. Now somebody, say, somebody is here now, and he says, it's your spiritual son. And they were both laughing. Pastor Taiwo just said, yes, Shalom Shumakide. Oh, he said, oh, he told you. Wonderful. And I remember last year, after being away for a while, when he came by, just called me one day. He said, for our annual conference this year, I want young people he said, tell your friend Paul Seaman to be there. He said, can you help me get your friend Seaman? He said, help me get Pastor Chris Devon. And he said, you know, Thursday showers. God gave it to me as a personal vision and a covenant. He said, so you are going to preach on that Thursday during the program? He said, that's the day I want you to preach. And I'm going to sit down there and watch you minister to the people. So me, I was like, well... Asking me to a minister would have been better, but saying that you will be there. <laughs> you, are, you are. And after the ministration that day, went to the office together. He prayed and he prayed and we spoke and we spoke. And I didn't know that would be my last time I was seeing him. When he traveled out, he called again. And then for about two weeks, I could not reach him. So I asked Sister Sharon DP, what happened? And she said, he's still in America. So I actually went to America, but I came in through Florida, and I was planning that I would go and see him in Maryland. And I flew from Florida to Maryland, but as I was landing, I just saw calls on my phone. Minister Dosi, Pastor Victoria Reze, different pastor. What is the, what is the, sir? Pastor just passed to glory. I said, really? I'm just planning to land in Maryland today, and I'm going to see him tomorrow. I just landed now. I was just like, Wow. There were two things he told me, and he said, I must never tell anybody, of course, and I cannot. <laughs> you see, he knew that he was going, but he coded it for us. Yes. He said, this thing I'm telling you now, he said, I have told, he mentioned Baba, he mentioned one other person, Dipshaw Mike, and he said, I'm telling you also, and I won't tell any other person. Yes. But shortly after that, I went to see him with my wife, and he now told my wife, she started crying. So she was looking at me like as if I was a sinner. <laughs> that, so you know, I said, but he said I should not tell anybody. That is good, he's the one telling you himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he said, during this conference, we want to give an award to Pastor. And the interesting thing is, someone is here to receive it on his behalf. <laughs> if you, there is a, there is such a strong anointing on this woman of God, and it's flowing in the lineage. And we are so honored to do this within the short time we have tonight. So there's a video they will play for just about three minutes now. And then I will invite Pastor to look forward afterward. But the video, please. 
a power in his He's keeping me. Jesus. Come on. He's all over me. Jesus. He's all over me. And he's keeping me alive. He's keeping me alive. He's keeping me alive. He's all over. all over me. And he's keeping me. Jesus. Jesus is keeping me now with the Holy Ghost of power, with the Holy Ghost of power, and this gift, give me a life, this gift, come on, with the Holy Ghost of power, this gift, give me a life, Jesus, Jesus, this gift. By the time you believe something enough to declare, you will get it. Jesus is looking for the hungry. He says, You are of God. I am of God. Let the devil say, 10 times. I am of God. I belong to Him. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, where I belong, has set me free. Take your glory, King of Kings. Take your glory, Lord. Take your glory, King of Kings. It belongs to you alone. Sing. Take your glory, King of Kings. Take all the glory. Take your glory. Hallelujah. Let's welcome together tonight Pastor Tolu Ejoku of the Fountain of Life Church. Wow. <laughs> Can we appreciate this woman of God, please? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Before we do this, I think, okay, maybe after presenting, what have you say what to the people? <laughs> so, on behalf of our son of David Church, we have the privilege of doing this to honor daddy and to honor him for what God used him to do. Probably there was no fountain, there might not be our son of David. Thank you, man. God bless you. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Somebody, you've got a shout of praise in the house this evening. Household of David, make some noise for Jesus this evening. As I was coming here, first of all, can you please honor? Can you please honor? Can you please honor Pastor Shola and Pastor? Please honor. You must give honor to whom honor is due. Sir, I want to thank you for honoring my father. 
and men will honor you. Men will honor you. He was always talking about you. Ah, God bless. Eshe, eshe, eshe. Men will honor you, sir. Men will honor you, ma. Isaiah 54, verses 2. Household of David, get ready for an expansion. There is an expansion coming. You see, when the devil sees you as a threat, then he does what he thinks he can do. But uh, God always has the last say. So get ready for bigger. God is going to expand your tent. Can I sing one song? Pastor Isaac said I should sing one song. No power of hell. No scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home here in the past can you sing it like you believe it no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns here in the power of Christ God bless you thank you sir thank you let's put our hands together and appreciate our again Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tonight, whenever we finish is when we finish. After all, it all ends tomorrow morning. Now, I want to know whether, uh, is Pastor Lickie around? Yet, yeah, we have to save time. Okay. <laughs> ah, right on time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, you see, tonight, uh, we are supposed to have two word sessions, Pastor Isaac and Apostle Man. But first of all, we are so privileged to have this man of God in our midst. Uh, this is the truth. I have so much honor and respect for Daddy Adeboe. As the leading man of God in our generation, a voice on that, and I honor the grace of God upon his life. 83 years getting stronger, and the anointing getting stronger. If you have been a Christian for more than 25 years, you would have seen people, many people have been raised and many have disappeared into oblivion. But a few men have been from generation to generation waxing stronger. Because of influence of men like that, it is easier for some of us to do what we are doing. They don't only pray for their churches, they pray for the entire nation. I know that there is a prophet, there is a voice, there is a man of God raised for the sake of this generation and this nation, and I honor him so much. We might not be able to bring daddy here. <laughs> Pastor Lincoln knows I crave for any opportunity to see daddy. I don't always have anything to tell her to just kneel down to hear a word of prayer from him. But I follow on TV. When he's praying, I follow passionately on TV. Because I know what this man represents. And those who have spiritual eyes can see. And from generation to generation... Now we have also a man of God from the same lineage, from the, that family. I hope you know that Redeemed Christian Church of God is the fastest growing church on the face of the earth. Not in Nigeria only. And the way they are spreading. It's a unique ministry. You can't copy Redeem. I move it to a part of our next state. The next state started digging a valley, planning that later people will live in that valley. 
But I just look at the valley, nobody there, but I saw a redeemed church there. I said, they're already waiting for the people. They are the real everywhere you go. <laughs> Wherever there are souls, RCCG will be there. So reach out to them. Some don't like it, but this is gospel at its best. And we appreciate what God is doing. I was so happy when Pastor Leke, we were just chatting and I said that we'll be highly on not, sir. It's part of busy schedule if we can just be around. Any of the days, let just know. And he came the first night briefly and now he said he will come back. We cannot let Pastor Leke be here without speaking to us. So for some minutes, I want us to get ready. Are we ready to receive from him? All the messages he's preached lately at camp are happen to be watching all of them. Tonight, please with joy. Let's welcome from our CCG. <laughs> Pastor Leke Atehoye. <laughs> we love you, sir. <laughs> Somebody please rejoice and thank God for him. Somebody please help me celebrate Pastor Shola. Please help me celebrate him. Help me celebrate him. I have a lot to say, but um, I know that I'm on the clock as well. My brother is here. My sister that I've always seen online, uh, shaking her hand for the first time today, is here. And um, I think the best kept secret that Pastor Shola has is his amazing wife. Um, we've been paying attention. She dresses absolutely amazingly well. She represents him, and I now understand why he's been able to be that calm. <laughs> because there's someone more powerful ensuring his safety. Very quick, we worship and then we start. Savior. Savior, Savior, my humble cry. Oh, why, Lord, thou art called holy Jesus to not pass me, hold him to save. Father, this evening as we are in this place at Mercy Conference, we ask, oh God, that your mercy will not pass us by in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, from wherever you hear a proper amen, let them receive resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus. In all you are doing in this season, do not let anything good pass us by in Jesus' name. Thank you, almighty Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we we'll pray. Come on, let our amen have life. Amen. amen. Please be seated. I have 20 minutes. Pastor will forgive me if I push it a little bit further. Um, it's good to be here. Uh, it's good to be here. It's good to see. My being here is already a testimony for somebody. Because when they are drawing up the list of individuals that they would promote, yours might not have been there at the beginning. But before the end, your name will turn up in Jesus' name. Come on, you have to. See, I need to explain something to you very quickly. I learned this somewhere, and then it worked. Um, the level of your amen and how you shout it will probably make a difference. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I know you're getting it. So I was speaking somewhere, and I did not know that my father was having issues. 
um, trying to relieve himself. I don't know what happened. And he was stuck in the toilet. So I said, if you can shout a proper amen, like I did somewhere else, and something jumped out of the individual that shouted that proper amen. He shouted the same amen in the bathroom, and whatever was disturbing him came off, and he was able to make it to the altar to minister. Can somebody that needs an anointing, a miracle, shout amen? Amen. Amen. I love that. Okay. Um, you see, Pastor Shola has always been, he's always been my man of God without knowing it. Now I know why he has been giving me all those gifts. It's so that one day he would call me and I would not be able to refuse. But as a son, I need permission to be able to go anywhere I go and do anything I do. So I bring greetings from daddy because he has to release me to be here. Um, I did the express in, uh, in a very brief time in order to make sure that I make the timing that you said I should be here. Um, and I arrived just on time, like how your testimony will arrive just on time. <laughs> uh, he, I told him what happened. Um, a lot of people have been telling him what happened. But I showed him yesterday about 2 a.m., 3.30, when we were done with the assignments. Um, and he was like, really? I said, yes, sir. And um, he said that uh, we must send him a gift. <laughs> Just to know that we are not only praying, but we are not only saying God bless you, but we literally physically bless you, sir. So my plan was while I'll be seated there thinking that uh, my brother Isaac will go first, I will drop the alert. But before I leave here, the alert will come in in Jesus' name, sir. So please, grab hold of your head very quickly. Grab hold of your head very quickly. And say, my head. My head. My head. head. Receive that which is yours at this conference. No one will take your crown. Touch your eyes. Say, my eyes. My eyes. Receive sight. And insight. Don't see distractions. Pull your hairs. Say, my hairs. My hairs. Hear what is yours. Hear the word of God in season for you. Touch your heart. You know, we are going to the, we are already in the month of love. Touch your heart. Say, my heart. My heart. Receive peace. Receive mercy. Be softened in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, what we will do is this. We'll call out some of the points. When we put the points, we'll pray into it. I've been following the conference, so I know many great men of God have already passed through um, this meeting already. In fact, the one that I stumbled upon, I was only there for about, on Wednesday, I was coming from midweek service because we're just around the corner. We, we follow closely everything that the household of David is doing. I mean, your billboard is probably the biggest that you can see. <laughs> Anywhere in the Keja. Um, so I, I branched in, and that man of God exposed me to something else. He said, there's a court that is the, is the courtyard of God, the tribunal of God. So when you have been fighting people physically and wasting your time, when you receive insight, you will take it to the right court where things can be changed for you. So this conference is already preloaded, but I'm going to engage you in the praying part of it. Are we ready? Okay, so what is resurrection? What is resurrection? It is the act of bringing something that had disappeared or ended back into use or existence. Back into use or existence. So the point number one is resurrection of belief or of faith. Resurrection of belief or of faith. John chapter 11 verse 25 and 26. John 11, 25, 26, New King James Version. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's how the Bible text ends. So grab the person beside you, maybe nudge them, give them an elbow and ask them, do you believe? believe. Do you believe? believe. All right, now jump up on your feet. That's the first prayer point. We're going to make it very quickly. I'm believing that this is a youthful place. You say, my father, my father, my father, my father. I, believe I believe my business, my business. Comes, back comes back to life now. 
I believe my marriage comes back to life now. My contract comes back to life now. My health comes back to life now. My bank account comes back to life now. You have 60 seconds had whatever you want to have. Call it back to life. Call it back to life. I believe that my relationship that is dead comes back to life. I believe my business comes back to life. I believe my marriage comes back to life. I believe that son that I cannot control comes back to life. I believe my health comes back to life. It is not what the doctor says anymore. It is what you say. This is part of the reason why I am in the resurrection, in the resurrection conference. My bank account that is not looking good comes back to life. Whatever you need to come back to life, call it back to life. Call it back to life. As Jesus has said, it will come back to life. Come back to life. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Remember the level of your amen. amen. Give somebody a high five and be seated, please. Give somebody a high five, be seated. I like it when I'm on the clock. Resurrection of what is lost. That means what has disappeared must now appear. What has disappeared must now appear. Luke chapter 15, verse 24. Luke chapter 15, verse 24. New King James Version. It says, For this son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to marry. They began to marry. Give somebody a high five and tell them, Welcome to your season of marrying. Find somebody else that would believe you and tell them, I will marry past you. <laughs> he said that this is my son that was dead, resurrection, and he is alive again. Jump up on your feet very quickly again. We have another prayer point in that. You will say, My father, my father, all that is lost in my life, let it be found now. All that I have lost, let it be found now. Not tomorrow, but today. Go ahead, you have 60 seconds. Whatever you know, you have lost. Those opportunities, the person you met that you should have collected a number, but you took a selfie. Whatever it is that you have lost, Father, it comes back now. Whatever I have lost, whatever I have lost that I did not take serious, let it come back now. If they had skipped me, let them remember me now. If it's documents that I can't seem to find and it's what is meant to access me to my next level, Father, please let it come back now. Let me find it now. Whatever I've lost, even if I don't know, I lost it. But because of your mercy at this mercy conference, Father, please let it find me now. 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 Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Tell them it's been found. Amen. Tell them I've been found. I've been found. Please be seated. Please be seated. I like you guys. Celebrate yourselves. You're doing a great job. In Luke 15, verse 17, this is the resurrection of the mind. In Luke 15, verse 17, the Bible says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and to spare? And I perish in hunger. And I perish in hunger. Resurrection of the mind for some of us is in different angles. Um... In my notes, I wrote a funny comment to myself. I said that some of us don't know, and this is figuratively speaking and genuinely, that you don't know that it's your own mouth that is smelling, but nobody is willing to tell you. All right? Some of us do not know the reason why it's not working out. It's not necessarily, I mean, you've been to every place. You've gone on different mountains. But this messy conference is the last bus stop. Some of you do not know that you are both the problem and you are the solution. 
because you've not actually come to yourself. Now, what happens when you receive? I mean, some people might be hinting you, and this is to digress and look for jokes. My, you know, Christmas period, they keep buying you perfumes because they don't have to explain the gift. You know, other times you can ask, oh, my birthday, why are you buying me this now? But Christmas, you know, we give whatever we want to give. They might buy you a lot of mouthwash as well. Some might even buy you shoes. You know, it's trying to hint you. I'll send you a lot of material. That means, you know, there's a kind of material they've been sending you. Stop. Nothing's wrong with Ankara, but stop wearing Ankara everywhere. <laughs> because they're waiting that you will get it. They're waiting that you'll get it. But this young man, as the Bible said, he said, and he came to himself. And he came to himself. Resurrection of the mind. Jump up on your feet. Jump up on your feet. They just winked at me. And my time is also winking at me. Jump up on your feet. Grab your head, either with one hand or two hands, depending on which one is most important to you. And you will say, my father, my father, my father at this mercy conference, resurrect my mind, resurrect my brain, resurrect my understanding. So I can come to myself in the mighty name of Jesus. Standard into prayer. You have 60 seconds. Father, please, at this mercy conference, have mercy on my mind, on my brain. Where I have been the problem, let me see it. At the same time, show me the solution. Where my mouth has been the one smelling, where I am the elephant in the room, where they are not willing to correct me, either out of fear, or they are just willing to see me lose, willing to see me fail. Please, oh God, resurrect my mind, resurrect my mind, resurrect my mind, resurrect my mind, resurrect my mind. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Come on, give that amen one more energy. All right, please be seated. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. You can call this one spiritual resurrection if we're tagging it on as you feel like tagging it. It says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. The honest truth is the in life generally and across board, we are all meant to go back to where we are coming from. Um, in studying this, you know, the parable of the prodigal son or the story, the son was running away from the farm. Um, packed all his, all, the, all his inheritance and then ran away. But the funny thing is, he still ended up in a farm in a foreign land. He ended up in pig farming for somebody else. So when he came into his own realization and sense that, why would I leave my father's kingdom to go and be working in someone else's kingdom where my situation would have been much better my ranking would have been much better. I would not be committing resources to someone else's success, but rather to my own success inevitably. Now, I know that there's a few of us in here that we have been toiling away in someone else's kingdom, which is not the kingdom of God, which is not even in the right place that we're meant to be. But because of the message of God that has allowed us to hold this conference, in fact, I will digress a little bit and, and, and dare to tell Pastor that this conference is actually for him. As he had speak resurrection, all that is happening is so that he can rebuild it completely which way, ever way he wants it to be. In the likeness and in the image of what God wants it to be for him. And, you know, immediately I, I sent him a message. I'm like, we must go there, we must go there. I was just hoping, let them release me, release me, release me. But as we have seen here, our citizenship is of heaven. And as my timer is timing me down, I want to give anybody in here an opportunity because we're at an altar. Reverend Sam, funny enough, is one of the men of God that I called in the middle of COVID. 
that uh, what is going to happen in this season. And then he gave me some three instructions. I followed those instructions, and I've not been given the opportunity to come back here to say thank you or see him to say thank you because it worked out well. This altar, the altar where we are coming from, the altar that I'm connected to that sent me here, all you need to do is to come today and just cry for mercy, for help. So in, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, if there's anyone that knows that they cannot continue doing this journey on their own strength, on their own power, just run very quickly to the altar. I will stand in agreement with you and pray with you that God Almighty will redirect you back into the place which you should have been. You see, this journey, it's personal, it's private. You don't have to work on anyone else's schedule or think that what would anyone think about you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I see you as you are coming. Just come forward. Take a knee and speak to God. It's between you and yourself. Even twins. Please, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. If they can kneel, please, usher, can, can they kneel? They can touch the altar. If you don't mind, they can touch the altar. I am not a security risk, neither are they. Just go ahead and speak to God. Just go ahead and speak to God. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for help. It is only those who cannot help themselves that heaven will help. If you think you can do it by yourself, then it would be you trying to do it by yourself. When the prodigal son or daughter realized that he could not handle it anymore, it came to his own mind. Any part of the altar is fine. It's, it's big enough. It's quite large. Any part of the altar. But once you're out, please make it serious. Make it count. Speak to God. My time here is up, but speak to God because you have all the time that you need. It is between you and your father. Ask him for help. That at this mercy conference, he should have mercy on you. Your citizenship, if it has been revoked, he should reactivate it back. Give you your passport back. Give you your license back. Just ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy so that you can connect back and get right on track where you should be, how you should be. So all this struggle would end. It ends this Saturday for you. For the rest of us, can we stand? Can we stand and we stand? Because we are still standing, but then we can also ask for mercy that we would remain standing. That we should remain standing. That we should remain standing. That our citizenship, as passports get upgraded, that our home too should be upgraded. That everything that we need to become the fullness of Christ to become that citizen that is able to control things regardless of whatever the economy is saying we can even ask for help so that it turns in our favor there's more than enough of us in here there's at least more than 120 of us in here more than 12 of us in here we can always change whatever it is that we want to change we're already in here in agreement so cry unto God cry unto God and in case you have a family member somewhere that you know needs that help, needs that re readjustment, needs that resurrection, either in mind, in spirit, in soul, ask God, speak to God on behalf of that individual. And for us that are outside, let's go ahead and call on him, ask him for mercy. Because you came out this evening to stand for him, to ask for help, he has marked you down. If your name was written before in pencil, he should please erase it and now read, write it with his blood, a permanent ink, so that it is not erasable ever again. A new journey starts now. A better journey starts now. An upgraded journey starts now. No more weakness. All the prayers we have been praying now would be answered for sure because it is not at his hands as short is or is here deaf, but it is us that are the problem. But now we are becoming the solution. We are becoming the solution by asking him for help, by asking him for mercy. Thank you, almighty father. In Jesus, precious mighty name, we are still praying. My brothers and my sisters outside, just ask God for help. If you are rededicating your life, ask him that as you've come forward to rededicate, he will please accept you. If you're coming out for the first time, it is as simple as ABC. Tell him, father, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. 
I believe that you died for me on the cross with your blood. And I confess you now to be my Lord, my protector, my restorer. And in any way that I've offended you, please have mercy. Write my name in the book of life. Let it be permanent this time. No more going back. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Um, yes, please celebrate God if you're celebrating God. I have, I have a group of... Uh, okay. Um, I, I have individuals that would give you some papers. and Okay, I think we've been called to a corner. Uh, please help me celebrate them. There's joy in heaven for this. Even if for those who are coming back home and for those who are coming out for the first time, for the rest of us, please raise up two hands up to God and just ask that in this season that you are resurrecting things, resurrect everything about me, that which I have asked, that which I haven't asked, that I'm supposed to ask. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Babies are easily carried when they lift both hands up. Ask God, please carry me. I do not know what 2024 holds. But this is not a wasted Saturday. This is a Saturday that I'm going to make it count. Carry me. Carry me, carry me, carry me. I want to experience not just the power of your resurrection, but the fullness of everything that you are. Go ahead and speak to God. Go ahead and speak to God. Oh, baby, fool. Don't be me sorry. Oh, well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Don't be me sorry. Oh, well. Gloria. Let's sing it. Can you give me a little volume on this, please? <laughs> Did you see what just happened in a very short time? <laughs> Anybody doubting the fact that Pastor Leke is heavily anointed cannot see. You know, I was looking at the people coming out. People don't come out because of Hebrew Greek. <laughs> Pastor Lincoln, thank you, sir. <laughs> Apostle Seaman kept hammering on one thing in the morning. The most powerful gospel, they are simple. Simple for anybody to understand. So simple that at times you need a preacher to make it hard. <laughs> the Bible says concerning Jesus, and common people heard him gladly. This is what I found in Daddy Adebo's message also. Now, a young man can go there and shout. I, I, if I have the privilege of meeting that again, there's one question that comes up in my heart. Is that people are already waiting for him to make altar call? That, like, they are there. Like, when is he going to? Because, one, wow, you see them running. You see, you go try it. Share all the Rema and Greek. <laughs> it is not too much of what is being said it is what is backing what is being said <laughs> you can harass people and abuse them and talk about hell and make all time you're looking at you like this it's not easy for people to leave their seat and respond to any call it takes an anointing we honor you sir thank you so much thank you and help us thank dead daddy for even thinking of people like us sending you to us, send a message. We are not taking this for granted. Dada, I've been pleading with you to let me see daddy again, and you have not allowed me. So maybe in the presence of many witnesses, we grant my request. You know, when we want to intimidate somebody, we bring others into the 
Uh, so, <laughs> hopefully, sir, you will give me the opportunity, sir. But we appreciate that they are mommy. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for them. I only met mommy once at Open Heaven. I just went there to pray and I came out and I saw her with one person following her and I greeted her and she drew me close and prayed. I just saw this. She melted my heart. I didn't know she could stop me to pray for me. She prayed and she prayed and then she left. You know, I stood there just wondering. And the day I met daddy also, I had the privilege of saying it one time through Bishop Waluke. And Bishop Waluke just said, well, I will leave the two of you. And daddy said, excuse me, sir. They said you want to see me, sir. I just prostrated. I said, I mean, I mean, I like, really? <laughs> Such a man of great humility. Thank you, Pastor Lincoln. Thank you. Are we ready for the word? <laughs> the second dose of the word. By the way, our man of God, Pastor Daniel Olawade. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I start tonight, there will be commotion here. God bless you. Thank you so much. And then, as Pastor was ministering, our uh, one and only Moses Bliss. <laughs> <and, laughs> Moses Bliss has been showing people redefining relationships. <laughs> that two are better than one. <laughs> we, when the new course will come up, oh, Minister Bukola Becky just walking. Oh my God. You know that I have said that along the line, she will have to come up. She, she didn't even tell me that she's. I mean, uh, this is my first time I've seen her in almost two years. Uh, you, are, you have entered it. <laughs> Honestly speaking, these things are divinely arranged. This is not, I believe, Pastor Leke brought something to add to HOD today. And it's coming from the knowledge it's coming from. Now we're about to receive the word of God again. 1995 was in secondary school. I was raised by Scripture Union. And I'm still a member of Scripture Union. And that's how some of us can understand some things going on in the body. I'm still a member of Scripture Union. That was the first time I listened to a message called Purifying Fire. Like my brother said yesterday, some of the old messages in Cardinal. I don't know when they preached that message. 1995. In secondary school, I preached in every class, two before every class, to preach the gospel. So I was wondering, ah, this man of God, I was so moved by that message. Then I heard I was coming to living faith, Abel Kuta. I arrived so early before the ushers. That is how to choose any seat you like in any meeting. I arrived before everybody. So I sat on the fifth row. As people were coming, they filled inside and outside, living faith, quiet road, Abel Kuta. And one usher came in. He would look at me. He wanted to bounce me. But my, the, the look on my face. <laughs> like, <laughs> inside me, I was just like, somebody will know that I'm not gentle. <laughs> that I have been there for hours before everybody. You will not ask me to go out. He will go. He will come back. He will go. And at the point, he stood there was looking at me. And this boy is, is a teenager. What's he doing there? And I just gave him one look. That whatever is speaking to you to talk about me standing up. Please shut down that voice now. After a while, I think my face gave him a message. So he left. And the meeting was so powerful. Papa made one other call. I'm sure Papa would. And then a guy, crippled guy came. They brought the guy to the front and he stepped there a little from the stage and laid his hand on the guy and the guy got healed immediately. He told them to leave him and the guy started walking. That was my first time in my life of seeing miracles at a close range. 
I was not told I was there. As guy was walking to the back by himself, I kept looking. So these are not fictions. You might think you know some things. When you see it firsthand, the conviction will sink in deeper. I said, wow. And then from that time, I've been listening. I've been listening till now. And you know what? Over 30, 40 years, the message of faith, the message of discipline, and what many people don't know, message of love. Papa walks in love. Pastor Emi has told me stories upon stories, and I will just stop here. Now, to see another generation emerging from this, and now here is a man with fire in his bones. The first time I listened to Pastor Isaac, I said, wow. I said, this is serious. And I was tremendously blessed. I knew right away right there that one day we'll be in a meeting together. I didn't know. Uh, I just knew it. So for the second time in household of David. It's such a privilege to invite and welcome in this Mercy Conference 2024, Pastor Isaac Oyedepo. <laughs> Somebody celebrate Jesus. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels, you know the song, lift up your hands, bring forth the royal. Ashwagabane 
resurrection it's not an event it's a person we give you the praise and we give you the glory oh yes for tonight dry bones are coming alive again there will be literal fire in your bones from now Holy Spirit we give you your rightful place Move in our midst. Souls have been saved already. Move mightily and massively in our midst. Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus. At the end of all that you do, I vow to return all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray. Household of David, will you give Jesus the big hand of praise that he deserves? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Please, before we take our seats, I'd like us to deeply appreciate God for our pastor. I love him so much, his dear wife. And I didn't come to the conference so much to preach, but to receive. If I had my way, I would have been here from the beginning. Pastor Osho Makinde, his wife, um, I want to deeply appreciate you. My family loves you. My wife and I, and of course, Bishop David Oedeko, like you heard today, really loves and appreciates you. We are so grateful to God. That our eyes see the things that we see. I'll be one of the people that will speak about this 20 years to come, 30 years to come. That I was at a conference. On the start day of the conference, the devil thought he had us. I've never heard of such a thing, but now I've experienced it. And I'm glad to let you know that before tonight is over, by the power of his resurrection whatever seemed to have been dead or dying in your life or my life finally is coming back to life <laughs> give the lord a big hand please be seated also all the ministers from the start has been phenomenal can we celebrate the lord for everyone that has spoken that god has used since the conference began I'd like you to know that we are not defeated. What we saw happen on Wednesday night is... That was Wednesday night, am I correct? Uh, Wednesday morning. What we saw happen on Wednesday morning is a picture of what must happen before resurrection. Wow. When I saw the video that went viral where pastor was speaking in fact someone had called me to say are you aware of what is happening at the conference you should be speaking i said no and when i saw the video while others saw chairs i saw bones and those who helped me around know that the message was concluded before wednesday night i received a download and when i saw the this is what i was trying to tell pastor when i saw the video the lord said now you can tell i gave you the right message it was bones i saw what seemed to be have been the ground was a valley literal opening of the eyes and what we saw at the start of the program was the beginning of resurrection
I'd like you to sit tight. We won't do too much of teaching. A lot has been done. I mean, we've, you've probably heard the best of messages on the subject of the resurrection. But the Lord told me, he said, tonight is a prophetic night. <laughs> we will not just be teaching and teaching, we'll be speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, before the next mercy conference, you will not look anything close to what you look like now. I'll be teaching on the subject of the resurrection, the valley of dry bones. The resurrection, the valley of dry bones. The greatest event in Christendom is the resurrection. And one of the greatest revelations to be unveiled before Jesus Christ returns is also the resurrection. Let me say it again. The greatest event in Christendom is the resurrection. We are not professing a faith that is built on the birth or just the death, but the birth, the death, and the resurrection. That's the greatest event. But God is saying through the mercy conference and speaking to our pastor about this and seeing what we saw is enough proof that he heard from God. And God is saying, the greatest event is the resurrection, but let them be taught and shown the reality of what it takes for something to die and come back alive. For except a cone of wheat falleth to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. And no wonder Paul the apostle said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I never knew until Pastor Delia Oshumakine was sharing about the fact that the first book written, I think he said was First Thessalonians. The first book written, First Thessalonians, and was written by who? Paul. Yet Paul will cry that I may know him. And I want to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Ay, ay. Being made conformable unto his death until you are ready to die, you are not ready to rise. God wanted to shift the household of David so it had to die. The building. Push kabai. <laughs> After every death comes life. In fact, there is a mystery. The mystery of life in death. So Paul began to exclaim that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. <laughs> the same Paul will say, if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. Because there are situations that will come your way that's as good as dead. That same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. Sunday morning is coming. But between the death and the resurrection, there is activity. And so what we've been having from Wednesday night till now is activity. Tomorrow, celebration. Hmm. Let's not go too much into all of the expositions we have received so far. But please take this. 
A revelation of the resurrection reveals three things among others. Three things that he has revealed to me for now. Three things. Number one is that the resurrection is a person. And we had a lot about that. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and the life. So when we talk about the resurrection that we've come for in this conference, it is an introduction to Jesus. Hmm. Is somebody catching what God is saying? Now go back to higher ground conference last year. What was it? Are you seeing there's a connection somewhere? You need a revelation of Jesus first before the resurrection. This thing is working something. I don't know what God is already speaking to him about the next higher ground conference. But I'm coming back. Because I must be part of the drama. From the revelation of Jesus to the resurrection. I'm waiting for the next one. Now, number two, the revelation of the resurrection talks about a people, a person, Jesus. Two, it talks about a people, a people, a people. John 14, 19. John 14, 19. Yet a little while, and the world seared me no more. Now, he's talking about the death, the resurrection. We won't see him because he's risen. But you see me. You have a revelation of me. Because I live. You. So, the resurrection is beyond him. It flows to us. Because I live, Jesus said, a people will live. So the revelation of the resurrection, one, reveals a person, Jesus. Two, it reveals a people, the church. The revival we are crying about cannot come without a revelation of the resurrection. <laughs> the things we are talking about, praying about, weeping about, crying about, that we want to see again happen like it has happened in the past and happening with our fathers in the faith will take the process of a resurrection listen do you know what happens when they say revival broke loose in a church let me make it very simple resurrection happened in the church that's the meaning there you have another definition of revival resurrection Number three, the revelation of re resurrection. Remember we said one, a person. Two, a people. Ayakai. Three is a period. <laughs> a season comes in a man's life where there's a switch. If you miss the season, you may have to wait for the next season. To everything there is a season, including resurrection. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. I want to show you something. Verse 1 and verse 2. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So the church will just get excited. But look at this number 2 verse 2. It says a time to be born and a time to die. And what happens after death is the resurrection. I am grateful to God, not because I am preaching tonight, but I am part of this thing. My life cannot end this month the way it started. I'm not talking of next year. I'm talking of this month. It's impossible. I am as hungry as every member seated here or anyone streaming. Kai, things must change. You know, when you are so used to death, you think you are alive, yet you are dead. He said, I wake thou that sleepest. 
He's sleeping, but he doesn't know he's asleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Hi, I just saw this. I began to read out that scripture before I saw that. I wake down that sleepers. I've quoted it. But what happens? Arise from the dead. Lift your hands tonight. In this service here tonight, Pastor Leke prayed that. I will re-echo it again with your hands lifted up. Everything dead or dying in this season of resurrection, I command that they come back to life. So I've given you the ABC of it, the simplest for you to remember. The resurrection, the revelation of the resurrection, one, reveals a person, two, a people, and three, a period. Household of David and everyone connected and everyone that is in love with what God is doing and about to do in this church. Get ready. This is our season of resurrection. <laughs> Ezekiel 37 is where the drama unfolds. And shows a picture of what happened with Jesus. So we read verse 1. All the way to verse 14. And we'll be able to make it on time. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Hmm. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down. In the midst of the valley. Take note. It wasn't just any point. It was a valley. They don't bury on top. They bury under. And this valley was full of bones. And it cost me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Ah. Very many, very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, remember, he's showing me this scripture and telling me to preach it before Wednesday. Then said the Lord God, unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinus upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. What is about to happen to household of David? All the mockers will so run into hiding. And so, what did I do? I prophesied. And that's what you sent me here to do tonight. I prophesied as I was commanded. Even if some people laugh, I prophesy as I was commanded. I prophesied. Someone said, no, 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 but you are not a prophet. A time comes when the mantle drops upon you. It can drop upon you for a day. I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. This is now showing you the drama that happened to Jesus. And behold, bones came together, bone to his bone. I, I, I just heard him. There are things that complete you that are in the hand of somebody else. So it means... The right bone may have been here. The left bone may have been there. But as I prophesied, this one came and met this one. Are you following what he's saying? Bone came to bone. Bone came to bone. Bone came to bone. Location. 
There are allocations for some of you. This is by digression, but I hear him in the spirit very clearly. There are allocations for you that are still in somebody else's hand. Before February is over. Wherever, whatever belongs to you is, it will locate you. Mm. So I prophesy. Hmm. And there was a shaking. And bulls came together. So don't, don't worry when you're wondering why are we shouting, why are we shouting. There has to be a noise. It's scriptural. You have heard and heard and heard. Now we will shout and shout and shout. There was a noise. Can I hear this noise from somebody who is experiencing this power of his resurrection? There was a noise and a shaking and bone came to bone. Now, verse 8, and when I beheld, lo, the sinus and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them. See all the activity taking place at a moment. Then he said unto me, you are not done. Prophesy again to the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, O breath. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this slain, Kai Kadai, that they may live. And so I prophesied. As he commanded me. And the breath came upon them. And they lived and stood up. An exceeding great army from a valley. Are you seeing household of David? <laughs> from a valley with bones very dry. Then there arose a great. Not an ordinary army. A great. A great. A great. Ex now by the way. I got it wrong. Exceeding. Great army is great, but now it says exceeding great army. Haven't you read? God is able to do exceeding. That means whatever you think the army is or will be or whatever you think the household of David will come out of this looking like, whatever you think the mercy seat will look like he said no your 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 views are below my capacity if they came alive that would have been okay but they didn't come alive as an ordinary group of men who told you they were an army before they died but the power of his resurrection doesn't take you back to where you were it takes you ahead of where you should have been and cut short the lost time exceeding great army go back to where we began the resurrection a person a people a period let's keep reading this is the main text for today then said the lord to me hi these bones At the house of David. Behold they say. Our bones are dried. Where do we begin from? And our hope is lost. You may not be a member of household of David watching. He's talking to you too. We are cut off from our parts. From where? Everything already arranged. If they can show it on the screen, I'll ask that they do. Just a picture of what it looked like. And with the eyes of the spirit, you will now see a valley. You will see those, those ions of the seats are bones. If we live here with just the teachings, without the activity, we have missed it. I never discuss the teaching with anybody, but you will know what I'm teaching nobody has taught. And what they thought, I'm not teaching. And what will happen tonight again is another one when the next teacher comes. And what will happen tomorrow? Aye, aye. 
if you are part of the army indeed, you are not bothered about how God brings the resurrection. Your own is just, I must resurrect. <laughs> and so God will bring somebody like Pastor Leke in 20 minutes and altar call is done. That is, it is cleared. Don't touch it again. Something is happening. Something is happening. He will smile again. You will laugh again. Your best days are not behind you. They are ahead of you. Our generation will see revival again. Shout amen like you are there. And so we go back and see and you may be wondering, why are we taking time to read? <laughs> he said, this is the household of David. They are saying, our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. We are caught from the floor. Therefore prophesy. And say to the household of David, Behold, O oh my people, I, I, <laughs> I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you to the land of Israel. Do you know what has happened by the incidents? God has just announced the household of David. There is an announcement in the realm of the spirit. You cannot pretend not to know that there is a church whose conference was not to hold. This is all happening as the picture of resurrection. I've never heard anybody teach it connected to resurrection. But see what is happening. You will know I'm the Lord when I've opened your graves and brought you out of your graves and I will put my spirit. Watch out. There will be manifestations of the gifts of the spirit in the household of David like never before. People will step into where you will have meetings. Miracles will take place without prayer. But except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. You know, if the enemy would have known, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. He wouldn't have been part of orchestrating the fire if he had known that, ah, this fire I brought will just take this church to another dimension and mess my kingdom. He wouldn't have done it, but he's a fool. So get ready. Resurrection is here. I don't know who made it early enough tonight. I'm glad to let you know. The person that walked into this auditorium, no matter the state of your bones, spiritual bones, material bones, financial bones, family bones, whatever it is, mental bones, whatever the state of dryness may have been, today, you step into the resurrection. So, there are five things to point out here, and we pray. And before we step down by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and as our pastor allows, there will be certain declarations. They are not written down, they will come from the Spirit. Five things that the Lord showed me from this scripture about the resurrection is one, there must be a valley. <clears throat> <laughs> so the first thing you see is in verse 1 he brought me into the midst of a valley Kai. do you know God was there when Jesus went to the cross no wonder Jesus said why have you forsaken me and the scripture says the psalmist says even if I go to the valley to the depths of the sea, you are there. So God can visit a valley. <laughs> the valley 
represents the position of the bones. The bones were not just where you can see them. They're in the valley. I'm just reminded now. Pastor Shumakini said he once saw RCCG planted in the valley. They are bones. The valley. In Matthew 25, 5 to 6, we see when a valley or a tomb was visited. Give me verse 6 maybe. 28, sorry. Matthew 28, verse 5. 28, verse 5. And the angel, hey, fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus. I'm coming, oh. He's, which was crucified. Verse 6, please, verse 6. He is not here. So he was there before. Kai. He's not here. He's risen. As he said, come and see the place. I announce to you, when they check you where you used to be, they will never find you there again. The valley. I'm unveiling what resurrection is as revealed from here. A valley. Ay. The power of his resurrection will always lead to a change of position. It may meet you in the valley but doesn't leave you in the valley. At salvation, as we just had a few minutes ago, the power of his resurrection changes your position from death to life, from darkness to light. You have all of that in John 5, verse 24, 1 John 3, verse 14, Colossians 1, 13. We didn't have to have a teaching for that. That was demonstrated. Kai kananorosh kayai. At the valley of dry bones, as many of us call it, please follow this. This will mean a lot now and after now. At the valley of dry bones, the first thing the power of his resurrection did is to attack the valley. Hmm. But until we acknowledge our state, there can't be a change of state. As I began to hear from Pastor Shumakinde, some of the things that, in fact, the Mercy Conference was allowed, announced so late because it wasn't meant to happen there. Ah. God is saying there is a shift, but we must attack this valley. My sister said, Pastor Tolu, enlarge the place of thy tent. Last year, higher ground conference, people were turned back. The space can't take us. It's not a house fellowship. It's an explosion. <laughs> so what you saw, whether you think it's natural or not, was an attack on the valley. That's it. Is that where we are going back to? Can you see in the eyes of the spirit? Those are bones. That's a valley. That will soon become like the children's church. Don't mind me. I am just speaking as commanded. 
The things you are struggling to do as at now, very soon it will become your daily expense. So at the power of his resurrection, one of the things that the spirit of God is doing is first to attack your valley. Some of us are too comfortable in the valley. Because we have others in the valley, we think the valley is normal. You know, when you are around abnormal people, you will think you are normal. And those who are doing greater things, you will think they are abnormal. There must be a switch. I, what I'm seeing is, is, is heavy. What I'm seeing is heavy. A time is coming to be street that is purchased. Yeah. We are starting from somewhere. A time is coming where I know that's, that, that is the household of David's city. God can bring a city out of a valley. Some of us built our first houses when we were kicked out. There had to be an attack on the valley. Some of us discovered that the anointings and dimensions when we were pressed down. If you want the grape juice, you must crush the grape. God is saying there's a generation waiting for city of household of David. There's a generation. That valley is not my place. The valley. So you can't talk about the power of resurrection or the resurrection without the valley. Secondly, you have the bones. The bones here refer to the state of God's people. So now we are just, we are not looking at church now. We are now looking at us. Let our fathers tell us the things they have experienced. From our daddy Gio to Bishop Oedipo to all of these great patriarchs. Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, all of them you will discover that we are failing. And you know, if you have other failures around you, you feel that you are okay. <laughs> have you noticed failures are in the same group? And us I used to be like that. Usually, we are backbiting on those who are doing well. When will you leave the value of failures? The bones. Some of us are so comfortable. We just come. I just had a testimony. I had a job. It's okay, but it's more than that. We have become so comfortable. We just have a revelation without. Ay, ay. And at the hour of prayer, it wasn't a healing service. Who was there? Peter and John. At the hour of prayer. Silver and gold, we have not. They've just come from the drama of resurrection. We should be walking as men and women with fire in their bones. Why are you afraid to challenge the norm? The bones are dry. When did we become so conscious about our status on social media. That may be a social valley. When will a generation arise again and say these bones are too dry? 
The bones were very many, but very dry. Everywhere there is massive increase in church. Everything. I'm, I'm not talking about household. Of, I'm talking about church generally. Massive increase. That doesn't excite me as much because the quantity of the bones is not as important as the quality of the bones. The bones were very many, but very dry. But I speak to somebody here who would dare believe God that came to this resurrection mercy conference. Something is going to happen to the state of your bones. Number three thing we see here is the word. Kabro <laughs> Dabai. As long as you live, you can't remember something this simple. Valley of dry bones. What happened? Valley. Bones. What next? You keep saying, he says, in verse 4, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word from God. We've had this so massively well since Wednesday. The word has been coming. The word has been coming. The word has been coming. I have been, I've every opportunity I've had to connect. I, I was in Unilag this morning. I still got back, still tried to see how I can get a view of what had happened. Connecting to the word. I heard things I've never heard before. I, the word, the word, the word, the word. The word. Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is not a motivational conference. No. This is the word. Don't excite me without the word. But if I see the word, you can't stop my excitement. The word. I'm not teaching you something I owe. It's for you. It's for me. Kai, I have stayed in this state too long. Be careful when people applaud you. It's the same way they can applaud you to your downfall. Lord, what is the state of my bones? And he says, this is the state of your bones. For God does not look like man looks. For me, mercy conference this year is like a retreat. It's now I'm telling you because it's my session. Kai, I, I, I didn't come to eat. Hayabai, kanumbari tabayai. Enough is enough of being at this state. When will the real bonkies again arise? When will a generation and a nation wake up? And say, the fathers have done their part. When would we rise up? When will the nation say, we thank God for all the people coming to have crusades. But what is wrong with us? Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Your bones shall live again. Hear the word, the word, the word. So go back and keep hearing. I will do the same. Aye, 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 aye. Aye. I heard again today that it takes 16 times to fully understand the message. So that means even the one I'm preaching, I still need to go back and hear it. Well, you know the thing has fully entered you is when you don't need your note. <laughs> hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And the Lord began to speak to me recently. I said, Kai, what's happening to us? We have heard so much from men that we have lost touch with God. Many of us know the traditions of our churches. We don't know the word of God. We don't. But the Bible says in Luke's gospel that they pressed. I think that's Luke chapter 5 verse 1. They pressed to hear the word of God. 
do you truly believe this is the word? The number of yeses shows us our challenge. They, they came and pressed. Is that Luke 5? Luke 5, right? And it came to pass that as the people pressed. What is the taste of the word in our generation? Pastor Dele was talking about, no, it's the word, it's the word. I said, aye. We better wake up. That is the word that excites. Is the eye. I said, what's happening to us? You know how you know we have lost touch with the word? We applaud the preacher for the way it is said. And how it is. We are applauding the preacher. It's not the word we came to hear. What happened in the days of Peter? That people will leave all their challenges and sit to hear the word of God. Do we still have as much value for the word? Or has the word lost value because it is, it is in every translation you can think about? Some of us have 50 Bibles at home. What value? Then you hear believers now arguing. The word says, hey, but let's face the fact. Face your dry bones. The value of the word must be restored in our generation for us to walk. Look, men like Evan Roberts. Okay, come. Look at our fathers in the faith. Here in this country, for instance. I just wanted to picture old generation, new generation. You see most of them with their Bible. I saw, I have a picture of Evan Roberts. Aye, aye. The man that shook wheels. Their posture normally is with the Bible. Daddy Gio, the same thing. Bishop Oedepo, the same thing. Archbishop Itahosa, the same thing. Now we have too many pictures that have no word. These generals never cared about photograph. In fact, it was said that Evan Roberts, you couldn't get him to take a picture. He's too busy. The fire that is coming from the eyes will damage the camera. So what's the point? <laughs> At 26, a nation was boiling. 26. A Bible school drop out. Was catching visions for three months continuously every day. What will make a man begin to declare, Give me Scotland or I die? Is it not? I, I need to start asking, Is it the same Bible we are reading? I'm told of one of the stories of the Archbishop that when he just gave his life to Christ, he said, uh, You shall lay your hands upon the sick, they shall recover. Cleanse the leper, heal the sick, raise the dead. His pastor was teaching him. He asked him, sir, do you believe what you just read? He said, yes. He said, ah, you believe it? He said, yes. Do you raise the dead? He said, no. Ah, but you say you believe what you read? He said, yes. Have you tried to raise the dead? He said, no. Ah. So he said, I will take what I've heard. And he started going from street to street. Is there any dead here? Did God ask you to feel bad for him? You shall lay your hands upon the sick, they shall recover. He didn't say pastors. This sign shall follow them that believe. Signs should follow us, we shouldn't be looking for it. I came here with my clothes on. I'm not naked. My clothes followed me. I can't tell you, go and look for what I'm wearing at home. If I say go home to look for what I'm wearing, it means I'm not wearing anything. This sign shall follow them that believe. The word. The word. So don't joke with the things we have heard. 
preacher and member. Let's go back and listen to it. Some things were too deep to catch it the first time. I, I heard things. I said, I have not heard this kind before. Deep things. If all we do is clap and go and say we are resurrected, we lie. The word. The word. The word carries life, so contact with the word brings life. John 1, 1 to 5. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He went on to say, a time will come where the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, the word. And they that hear shall live. He said that in prophecy. By John 11, he said, Lazarus, come forth. You can't contact the word and remain in a dead state. I didn't say you can't contact preaching. That's not, I said the word. I didn't say your notes. I said the word. Until the word becomes personalized to you. Your own word. That's what brought each bone to themselves. The word located the bone. When the word steps into the valley of dry bones, there is bound to be a rattle. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. A rattle. You see that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together. Bone to his bone. A rattling. The word. I taught our children this week in our devotion. I said the word of God is our license to life. If you have ever had your license seized, you know that you can be arrested even though you are a licensed driver for the absence of your license. When the police stands, one of the things they are looking for is your license. Recently in the city of Abuja, where we are, I got stopped. They say I was talking on the phone while driving. I said, did you see me on the phone? They say, you were looking down. <laughs> and I couldn't argue. And so, what they did to punish me is to take my license. And they say, you can go. The same people can arrest you somewhere else for not having the license that they seized. So at the valley of dry bones, before you are allowed to come out of the grave, you must present your license. The word of God is that license. John 14 and I believe verse 19. I hope I have that correct. John 14, yes, verse 19. The world said me and they will see me no more. But ye see me because I, who is I? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The word. The word is your license to life. If we remain word empty, that's not household of David because this is a word loaded church. But you can be in the midst of a word loaded church and be a word dry bone. The word is the license. All I'm saying is from Ezekiel 37. The valley. What's the next one? Let me hear you screaming. The word. Louder. The, word. the third one. The word. the word. The fourth one. The spirit. Ezekiel 37, 5. Ezekiel 37, 14. The spirit, the spirit. Give me verse 5, please. Ezekiel 37, verse 5. Do we have it? Behold, I will cause my breath. If you go and study that scripture, and God gives you a deep understanding, breath there is spirit. So he said, I will 
cause my spirit to enter into you and you shall live. Give me verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Out of the valley. To your own land. Not to, to another valley. To your own land. And you shall know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord. The spirit if that same spirit thank God for the word and the words I speak unto you they are spirit and life. I understand that but he said now he's talking about the word Jesus. He said if that same spirit that raised up the word from the valley of dry bones dwells in you that same spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. Ah, to enjoy the power of his resurrection, we must allow the interruptions of the spirit. For my words and my preachings were not in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of spirit and power. The spirit. It is the outpouring of the spirit that qualifies dry bones to come alive. And finally, our time is up, is the prophetic. And that's why there has been a lot of amen, amen, amen. It's not a downplay of anything, it's part of the process. And so prophesy, I prophesy. Prophesy, I prophesy. Prophesy, I prophesy. I'm here again to prophesy to somebody here. Before the end of February, there will be a shift in your life. Karabai, kanokabai. Look at it. Between February and November is how many months? How many months? Come on, how many months? Let's say 10. Some of us don't understand mathematics too well, but take January, take December. What do you have? Let me hear you louder. This 10 months for someone will be like a decade. In terms of results, in terms of... Ay, 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 kai, ay. Now what you see that happened at the Valley of Dry Bones as we round up is the hand of God must have also come and gave them speed. He didn't say they came back to life and sat down. He said they came back to life and they arose and exceeded. My brother is here. We will sing that prophetic song. Oh, oh, Luambe, Gloria. Can I have somebody help me, please? If you allow me, the next two minutes is a prophetic sound. Put life in it, please. Gloria. Someone is getting speed by resurrection. You are recovering and overtaken by the power of his resurrection. That I prophesied as I was commanded. I come from a prophetic lineage. There must be a bit of it inside from time to time. Lift up your hands. Every area where you may have suffered a stagnation representing death by the power of his resurrection, you are released from that valley in the name of Jesus. He said, you have gone round this mountain long enough. Whatever cycle you may be in, 
you are moving but no progress by the power of his resurrection the resurrection power doesn't leave you in the valley the resurrection power doesn't leave you at the floor level the resurrection power brings you out i therefore decree every form of movement without progress is terminated here at the mercy conference some of us including myself our spiritual rate is pitiable the dimensions we should be in is far from where we are by the power of his resurrection power power kaya by kai. by the power of his resurrection for someone there shall be a shift in your spiritual life a generation is waiting for some of you and you are still in the village a generation is waiting for you and you are still in cycles a generation is waiting for you and you are still weeping you who should wipe away tears i hereby decree by the power of his resurrection in the authority of the name of jesus the resurrected christ everyone that is behind schedule by the power of his resurrection i decree you catch up with schedule in the name of jesus and if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he said that same spirit will quicken, quicken, make alive your mother bodies. I decree every lump, every cancer, every fibroid, every stranger in your body, every tumor in your body, by the power of his resurrection, they are melted in the name of Jesus. Whoever may have left you behind and they are mocking. They've left you behind and they are using you as examples. They've left you behind and they are, they are, they are waiting to rejoice at your downfall. Well, by the power of his resurrection, there will be a change of position. When the spirit of God comes upon a man, comes upon a meeting, things shift. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You have heard the word. The spirit has been injected in you. And you are saying, no, enough, enough. We are a few days to the last day of the meeting. There may never again be in recent times another resurrection. May you point to today, 3rd of February, 2024, as the day where a shift took place. visions come alive in the name of Jesus dead ministries come alive in the name of Jesus dead businesses come alive in the name of Jesus dead marriages come alive in the name of Jesus dead finances come alive in the name of Jesus I decreed so and when the prophetic came place the last of the five there arose a great army and this army can be likened to Joel chapter 2 the kind of army that we are going to see in our revival the revival we have been praying for everyone is marching in his ways and none are breaking their rank get ready for it get ready get ready there are people that will be sent into politics there will be a shift people sent into ministry there will be a shift the Lord has been telling me of recent while there are other offices of the ministry so prevalent one seems to be lacking the ministry of the evangelist for someone here with a clear call of the ministry of the evangelist in the name of jesus that fire that catches evangelists the fire that makes them restless the fire that is in their bones i decree the same 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 in the name of jesus they will not respect us alone for our teachings they will respect us for the proof as we all leave the mercy conference including myself i'm going back to my assignment with a consciousness of the resurrection because at the valley of dry bones it didn't end at the valley the bones didn't end very dry the bones didn't end as very many there arose a great and mighty army i just heard him raise your hand in the name of Jesus Christ, the giant in you arises from this conference.
finally, one of the things that the resurrection, the power of resurrection does, aye, aye. <laughs> you become a risk taker. There are bridges to burn. You think your help is in a man, so you keep looking at him. So, uh, what, what do you think? But today has marked a difference. My father will say this way, he either be Lord of all or not Lord at all. Your generation is waiting. What are you doing? Aye, aye, aye. Thank you, Lord. I heard him again. Listen. Don't leave this conference like you are still in the valley. Don't leave this conference like your bones are still very dry. I'm talking to you as a person now. Don't leave this conference as one who didn't hear the word. Don't leave this conference as one who didn't see diverse manifestations of the spirit and we yet see more tonight. Don't leave this conference as one who didn't receive a prophetic word. There are certain things said today, you know it is you. Rise up from the valley. Get up from that dying state. Step onto higher grounds. Father, we give you the praise. And we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for the power of your resurrection. We give you the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. appreciate God's servant tonight, Pastor Isaac Oyedekwo. What a word from the throne of grace. Thank you, sir. So it was possible, Pastor Lekin, now Pastor Isaac, thank you. We love you, sir. We appreciate you. And the good thing is that you already invited yourself. So we will not have to <laughs> add any effort <laughs> Try to invite you. Thank you, sir. We celebrate you. Glory to God. So much to listen to after this conference. Maybe I should call the choir forward for the administration. We are going to give an offering now. But I want to invite somebody to do that for us. We can't have a man of God here and let him just... Uh, <laughs> we are so honored to have... Well, <laughs> he's been here many times. Our one and only, can I have the choir to come up and take your ministration while we do the offering? Thank you. <laughs> Did you hear what I said before? I said the choir. Were you not planning to minister before? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I would ready to give an offering, but I want the man of God to do it for us this evening. Let's welcome our very own Pastor Daniel. All our day. <laughs> Talk of spiritual energy and physical energy. <laughs> when I grow up a little more, I'll be as energetic as this man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. If you are resurrected, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We're about to give a resurrection offering. 
that will terminate suffering. Hallelujah. Sometimes, most of the time, when you offer, you don't suffer. I want to celebrate Pastor for this opportunity given to me to do this tonight. Thank you very much. I only came to receive my resurrection and to be blessed, but I didn't know that I'll be given this opportunity. Second Kings chapter 3. I celebrate all the ministers that have ministered in this conference. And we give God praise for what God is about to do. I'm happy. I'm, a, I'm part of the... Pastor Isaac is not the only one that is part of the resurrection. I'm part of the resurrection. By the way, Pastor Isaac is my twin brother, so... so I'm part of the resurrection. And my boss, Pastor Leke, celebrate you. <laughs> Are you there? Second Kings chapter 3, verse 26. Second Kings 3, verse 26. We're going to read from 26 to 27. And we take our offering. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him. Okay, let's start from verse 25 to gain perspective. From verse 25 to gain perspective. And they beat down the cities. And on every good piece of land, cast every man is stone and filled it and they stopped all the wells of water and fell all the good trees in only in Kishoret left the, the stones thereof, albeit the slinger went about it and smote it. You see, they were fighting. Moab and Israel were fighting. Israel is God's covenant people. Moab are not believers. And the king of Moab, show me the scripture. When I'm using scripture, don't put picture. Ah, uh, 26, 26, 26. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too deep for him, he took 700 men that drew sword to break through unto the king of Edom, but they could not. I mean, the battle was so tough, so the king of Edom... He was fighting with Israelites. So he took 700 men to break through. And they couldn't break through. What 700 men could not do? What will deliver the victory? Show me this verse. Come hey, on, let's read. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against who? Against who? What happened? And they departed from him and returned home to their land. The enemy of God was fighting with the children of God. He took 700 soldiers. They couldn't break through. He took his son as sacrifice. Then God now came against his people. Don't joke with a man that has paid this price. Don't joke with a man of sacrifice. Their sacrifice speaks louder than their voice. Tonight is another time to sacrifice. In the resurrection, you have to die to what you have. Sacrifice what you have so that you can live to what you don't have. There is a particular dimension of resources that God needs to bring your way, but you have to die to the one you have. Sometimes what you have is what is limiting what God wants to do. Sometimes when we don't offer, we only have an idea of what we don't give. We don't know what we have missed. You have no idea what you are missing by not releasing what is in your hand. But you have an idea. The only thing you know is, I didn't give one million. I didn't give it. But you don't know what you have missed. Tonight... Maybe your 700 warriors have not been able to break through. But you will give tonight a breakthrough seed. An offering that terminates suffering. Lift it up to God if you have it in your hands. If you are making a transfer from your phone, lift up those devices in faith. Pastor Isaac said something that I heard. 
He said, when yeah, it's Pastor Lickie that said, he said, when you lift up your, he said, a baby that lifts up his hand is easy to be carried. Lift up the hand. Lord, we have tried to break through with many other things. We have not been able to. We have tried to assess the blessings. We have not been able to. All the things we have done in the past are like our 700 men that the king of Moab used. But this is our sacrifice tonight. As we die to this by dropping it, we are exhorted to an endless resources. As we die to this one in our hand by dropping it, as we leave this meeting, we resurrect to an endless ocean of resources. Amen. We connect to the streams that can never die. Amen. We connect to the streams that can never dry. We connect to the ocean that can never dry. We connect to the sea that can never dry. After this meeting, we assess the realms of endless resources. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Cast that seed and trust God for a resurrection. God bless you. You can take your seed. God bless you. of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And for fear in the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Oh, but the story lies right here. An angel of the Lord appeared unto the women and said, Fear not! Looking for. 
for the living among the dead. He is not here. For he has risen as he said. See the place where the Lord used to lay. review the story one more time an angel of the Lord appeared to the women and said fear not fear not fear not for I know the living among the dead he is not here here. for he has risen as he said come see the place where the Lord used to lay remember how he said while he was yet in Galilee What did he say, Sopranos? to God. <laughs> Shall we appreciate the choir tonight, please? Aren't they wonderful? We are so blessed tonight. Let's rise together and receive this wonderful man of God, Mr. Samis, worship leader, heavily anointed and highly skillful. What a privilege in the house to have a game. From the city of Abuja to the rest of the world, let's welcome tonight Minister Moses Bliss. <laughs> we can do better to Mercy Conference 2024, the resurrection. We honor you, sir. <laughs> say neighbor I am getting bigger every 2024 I am getting you are not saying it I am getting bigger every 
Look for another neighbor. Say neighbor. This year, I am getting bigger every. If you are ready, can you give the Lord a shout? You know, the Bible says, for our light afflictions, which is for a moment, walketh in us an exceeding and greater weight of glory. Household of David, are you seeing the glory? Exceeding, greater, 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 greater weight of glory. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Sound, give us a bigger sound. <laughs> I am Jesus in my life. I'm living for his glory. I'm on fire every day. And nothing can stop me. Doesn't matter what I face. I am getting bigger every day. Every day. I have Jesus in my life. Living for his glory. I'm on fire every day. And nothing can stop me. Doesn't matter what I face. I am getting bigger every day. I am Jesus in my life, living for his glory. I'm on fire every day. Say, and nothing can stop me, doesn't matter what I face. I am getting bigger every day. Every day, say, I have Jesus in my life, living for his glory. I'm on fire every day. And nothing can stop me, doesn't matter what I face. I am getting bigger every day. Are you ready? Everybody say we getting bigger every day. Bigger every day we getting. We getting. No limitations. We taking over. Say we getting. Everybody say we getting. We getting. Do your hair like this. We getting. We getting. No limitations. We've taken over. We getting when we step in the arena, it's a banger. Silence the voice of failure. We make success louder. We bigger and bigger. We bigger is realer than real, and we are on fire. And this is the life that we chose. We're balling in the Holy Ghost. Ah, yeah, we go. We will never stop. Say, there's a spirit that's alive in me. The spirit of the Lord. And it's taking me to levels me I've never been before. I got joy like a river. Chopping life like a pizza. Cause I'm bigger. Hey, bigger. I'm big. Everybody say. Up what I'm forward. Up what I'm forward. We are on fire. We are on fire. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. They cannot stand us. They cannot stand us. We are on fire. We are on fire. Oh, say, up. put your hands up. Hey, we are on fire. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. They cannot stand us. They cannot stand us. We are on fire. Everybody say, I am Jesus in my life. Living for his glory. I'm on fire every day. And nothing can stop me. Doesn't matter what I face. Say, I am getting bigger. Can you spread your hands? We get it, you know we get it. We get it. We get it. Say, bigger every day, no limitations. We've taken you know. Say, we get it. Everybody say we get it. We get it. We get it. We get it. No limitations. We taking over. We get it. You stand like this, stand like this, not by power, not by might, hey, but by the spirit of the living God. Oh, anything is possible, bigger than we used to be. We have moved, hey, I say we have moved, not by power, not by, power. Not by might, not by might. Hey, but by the spirit, the anything God. is possible. Are you ready? Let's go. We have moved. Hey. Sing not by power. Not by might. Hey, hey. But by the spirit. Hey, hey, hey. Are you ready? Let's go. We have moved. Hey, I say. Sing not by power. Not by might. Hey. But by the spirit of the living. Anything is possible. 
possible. Let's go. We have somebody shout. Everybody under the sound of my voice stand like this. We are about to enter another dimension. How are you going to get that result? Not by power. Not by might. Say, but by the spirit of the living God. Anything is possible. Let's go. We have moved. Start where you are. Can you release a shout in this place? Listen. When, when Pastor David was, Pastor Isaac was ministering, I love the part that he said that there was a noise. The evidence that something has happened to your spirit is that there will be a noise. Listen. This year, you cannot be silent. You must begin to shout. You must shout even though you don't know why yet. Shout because you know something will happen. Hey! Shaka Paradabaya! Hey! Stand like this, everybody! Pasekete Labaya! After you move this time, I want you to release a shout. This year you need to be shouting. Shouting is an evidence. Shouting is an evidence that something has happened. Shouting is an evidence. Have you been there when, when a woman gives birth? What do you hear? A shout. Are you ready? Not by power. Not by might, but by the spirit of the everybody you bigger than we used to be. Let's go. We have Can you shout? Hey! 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 Shataka Baya Danabaya! Are you ready tonight? Get a dance partner. Who is your dance partner tonight? You people are too organized. Bob, you know that joy. Joy is, is, is a fruit of the spirit. One third of the kingdom is joy. And me, I'm a minister of joy. So if I minister to you, you must be joyful. Can you shout again? After the conference, when you get home, walk in your car park and begin to shout. Walk inside your house and begin to shout. When they ask you, when they ask you, why are you shouting? <laughs> hey, when they ask you, why are you shouting? Tell them, because I know it will happen. Because I know it has happened. It has happened. Lift your hands. I'm making billions every day. Billions every day, I'm making billions every day. No limitations, I'm taking over. I'm making every day. Hold on. Let me know if your faith can take it in this church. I'm giving billions every day. Hey! Billion. As one man, I'm giving. I'm giving. Imagine when you're giving billions. No limitations. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Can you release a shout in this place? Wait, where is your where is your dance partner? Where is your dance partner? This segment is for is not for those who are too organized. This segment are for those that understand how to enjoy the blessings of God. Show me your dance partner. If that partner is looking too lukewarm, look for another partner. A partner that carries ginger in their spirit. That's the one we are talking about. I came here to celebrate God because I know it's another level. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is taking care of me. 
Sound, please give us sound because what is something is about to happen in this place. Fire is about to catch. Shata Kappa. Speak in tongues. Reka Barra Dadabaya. Give us sound. Put your hands together. Every day, hey. new testimonies everywhere. Hey. Let this grace I receive daily, daily. I know Jesus is taking care of me. Hey. New messages every morning. You daily load me with benefits. Cause I'm a benefit boy You treat me like your only child In the world I know Jesus is taking care of me Hey New miracles Every day New testimonies Yeah Let this grace I receive Daily, daily I know Jesus is taking care of me Every morning, you daily love me, you daily love me. Hey, cause I'm a benefit boy. You treat me like your only child in the world. I know Jesus is taking care of me. Hey, we are here to testify. Jesus is taking care of me. Hey, oh, Jesus is looking after me. He is watching over me, sir. I'm shining because I'm shining because Jesus is put your hands up. Jesus is taking care of me. Jesus is taking care of me. Oh, Jesus is looking after me. Say, He is watching over me. Jesus is watching over me. I'm shining because Jesus is taking care of me. Hey, favor all around you. Jesus is. Hey, everything is working out for your good. Dude. Hey, everything is working out for your good. He is fighting your battles. Oh, no, 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 no. Fighting your battles. Oh, no, 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 no. Put your hands together. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you are wonderful, Lord. Darling Jesus, you know the fail. Hey. Oh, darling Jesus, you are always on my case. Now you, they give me joy, they give me peace, they give me grace. So I thank you, my Jesus. Oh, hey, thank you, everybody. Fails me, you know that I have to shower me with blessings. So I love you, my Jesus. Oh, hey, love you. Everybody said, Daddy Jesus, Daddy.
still they do what we get. Let's go, let's go. From my train to this, till this very day, I am never ever had us in my Jesus' name. Hey! From before time began, he has never ever changed. It's the same today, just as he was yesterday. Oh, my, 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 my. Hey! Goodness, ever. Hey! phone into three and you will look you will say child when it happens this is how you say you stay with it too far again you are not emphasizing this child are you people among lift your hands say miracles I don't know 
many of you know this song? But when the testimony happens, you will say, Lord, you are great, you are greatly to be praised. Because it they happen as you talk, and Baba, I thank you. Came out one week ago. Lord, as you talk, hey, Lord, you are great, Lord, you are great, you are greatly to be praised. Because it they happen as you talk, and Baba, I thank you. Lord,
can boast on him. Lift your hands and say, You never fail, you never change. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. This is my confidence, oh God. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You can do it again, Lord. You can do it again. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. Sing, you're too faithful to fail me, Lord. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too to disappoint me. You are not a man that you should lie, Jesus. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize. Can we lift our hands and boost about our God? Lift your voice. Sing, you are who you are. You are who you are. Yesterday. Talk and do God, oh, 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 you never fail, you never change, you are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you, I worship you. Lift your voice and say, your truth. Oh God, you're too faithful to disappoint me. You're too. Oh God, you are proven yourself. You've proven in my life and I've come to me. Jesus, oh, you're too loving to leave us halfway. Oh God, what you snatch, you will always finish. And I've come to realize that you're too loving to leave me. Lift your hands, sing, you're too loving. your hands in this place if you've come to realize the song is for those that have come to realize lift your hands pray in the spirit he says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I am the God of all flesh. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Meet it. 
Hallelujah. Worship is not performed, it is offered. And blessed is the man that God receives his worship. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Even me, I'm offering my sacrifice. Tonight, lift your voice and offer your sacrifice. Magresila gronde pradila conredihas. Macrosophandele pahandredila hadas. Oh, 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 oh. Forever you are Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And forever you are Lord. I'm acknowledging you for who you are, for what you've done in my life. And I knowledge in you for who you are dan sakire dan sakire i'm acknowledging you for who you are in our lives lord jesus i'm acknowledging you for who you are The Bible says in Philemon 1 verse 6 that the communication of our faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. Can you lift your hands and go ahead and acknowledge him? Acknowledge him. As you acknowledge him, the communication of your faith becomes effective. Lift your hands, acknowledge it. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, bless him. Thank him. Lord, I'm amazed by how you showed me mercy. Chinekemo, thank you for your mercy over this house. Lord, I'm amazed by how you showed me.
Just wave your hands and bless his name. This is indeed an unusual night. Jesus will bless your name. Jesus will bless your name. We give you praise. We are supposed to go into the final word session, but surprisingly, one of our mentors again, and one of our pastors, or one of my pastors and one of my mentors just decided to surprise us with an apostolic visit without really telling us this is amazing, this is awesome. And we can't have people like him and not let. What a privilege tonight. We have the senior pastor of the Covenant Nation. Let's welcome together tonight Pastor Kbotu Oyemade. <laughs> What a great honor. <laughs> Amen. All right, I just say, wait, hold on. I will just say one thing to you. Don't ask why it happened. Don't ask yourself what if, why. Just take this scripture. It's not everything, and I'm saying this sincerely, sincerely as a word of faith person. It's not everything that you can understand now, but in the future, you will know why. God takes away the first to establish the second. Are you following what I'm saying here? So know that he wants to establish something new inside this place. It's not the devil. God takes away the first to establish the word, the second. When you see the second, you will know why he took away the first the way he took it away. Are uh, you following me? So please, let me just say this here. Erase from your mind the image of a bond building and replace it with a 10,000 seated structure. You know what I'm saying? And let that structure be what you are seeing, not any bond building. And shortly, you will understand why it happened. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice. I pray for your servant, the set man of this house. Lord, we ask for divine wisdom at this particular point in time. We open our doors unto you with rejoicing and praise. And we place the cross in these waters. That which tasted bitter shall shortly be sweet in our lips. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Huh? Thank you. Put your hands together, somebody. <laughs> you know, um, Mercy Conference, one of the reasons or one of the, uh, one of the things that inspired us or the main thing Thank God for Wabek. You know, Wabek uh, was the first uh, main, a kind of conference where you see ministers mourning, and they are the first one I saw. And we had done one or two meetings that time, no morning session, no lineup of ministers like, but we took the pattern from Wabek. And Wabek made us to know that money sessions can be done. I was in Wabek and I was given an opportunity to speak around morning to afternoon many years ago. And that was the first time I saw the possibility of a conference having money session and people attending. So I believe if Wabek did not hold, we wouldn't be having Mercy Conference the way. Because we've had one or two before then and it was just two days evening and that was all. So, we took a pattern from Wabek. And Wabek has actually provided that pattern and that model for a lot of main, uh, conferences in Nigeria now. Thank you, sir. We salute you. 
for the pioneering grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's a teacher. He doesn't use the title of apostle, but apostolic teacher to the body of Christ. Thank you, sir. Tonight, <laughs> without, you see, this time many men, we have to forgive us whenever we finish. We will try our best. But uh, by the way, today is Reverend Sam's birthday. I know Pastor Nick here once said that they watch some of our meetings. Let's, I believe they are watching us. And if they are not right now, the video will get to them. Let's just say happy birthday to Reverend Sam. Now, do as if you are seeing him on the screen. And sing to him, or sing for him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Everybody shout, happy birthday, Pastor Sam. We love you, sir. Tonight, let's welcome together an apostle to the nations of the earth. <laughs> I thought that we spoke till midnight yesterday. Even if I was preaching for my friend, Pastor Aki, but I went to his room and we, Pastor Lily, and we talked till midnight. This man is humble, he loves God, and we thank God for what he represents in this generation. Again, in household of David, to 2024 Mexico Conference, the resurrection, let's welcome together Apostle Joshua Selman. By the way, Wait, 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 wait. In case I don't get to say this again, the meeting starts 7 a.m. tomorrow at Police College. The stage has already been set and the sound is an open meeting. Now, for those who have not becoming parents because of where to put children, it will be a short service, but it will be powerful. And Pastor Nathan said he's coming back again tomorrow. He's been there, was there on Wednesday. So, tomorrow, 7 a.m., Police College. They are, full, they are filled. It's a very big field and it's going to be an awesome time by the grace of God with Apostle and Pastor Nat. So let's welcome. <laughs> I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Glorify, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Let that be your prayer tonight. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Spirit of the living God, we speak. We pray that you will speak to us once again and cause us to arise, cause resurrection to happen for us in experience. And tonight we pray that Jesus be praised, Jesus be glorified. Amen and amen. God bless you again. Please be seated. Good evening, everybody. Pastor Shola, thank you. Thank you so, so very much. I appreciate you and your dear wife and i sincerely appreciate every man every woman of god quite a number of great people i came in meeting pastor isaac preach and it was such a profound time you know one of the things that was in my mind uh, while he was teaching was i rejoiced in my spirit because 
of the kind and quality of vessels that God is raising from this nation. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Hallelujah. Every generation will not fail. There is a generation that will get it right. And by the mercies of God and the privilege of his grace, may we be that generation. In the name of Jesus. I support you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We honor you, sir. Thank you sincerely. Right. We'll be very fast tonight and we'll trust God for a time to pray. I believe in what the Lord is doing in this conference. I said it earlier on that God's method has always been his word. When God wants to help a man, he sends his word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm considering the power of his resurrection. We took out some time in the morning to bring forth five pillars that represent the gospel, five pillars that represent salvation. And I told us number one is the humanity of Jesus, his earth walk. Number two is his death. Number three is his burial. Number four, his resurrection. Number five, his exaltation, his ascension. If you miss any one of these five, you will never be effective in the spirit. As far as your kingdom adventure is concerned, that every one of these pillars has a significance as far as the holistic building of the believer is concerned. I recap one last time, his earth walk. It was important for him to be a man. If he were not a man, he could not be seen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so his humanity, his death, his burial, his resurrection, then his ascension and exaltation. And tonight I want us to consider the power of his resurrection. Matthew 28 from verse 5 and 6. Matthew 28, my God, 5 and 6. Please help us, media. Matthew chapter 28, 5 and 6. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. The next verse, please. He is not here, hallelujah, for he is risen. Not he was stolen. He is risen. The reason why he is not here is because he is risen. As he said, come and see the place where the lord lay next scripture and i begin to teach philippians chapter 3 and verse 10 paul prayed a very profound prayer and he said that i may know him and among the many things i want to know and understand about him is the power of his resurrection that there is a wealth of understanding that can come to the believer when you press to know the power of his resurrection hallelujah now the power that comes with the resurrection is released on four platforms and i want you to please listen i may not be able to talk about all of them the power that comes with the resurrection of jesus is released in experience to the believer on three four platforms number one believing in and receiving jesus who is the resurrection and life the first platform to experience the power of his resurrection is when you believe in and receive jesus himself who is the resurrection and the life in john chapter 11 24 and 25 jesus called himself Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise. Talking about Lazarus again in the resurrection at the last day. Next verse, please. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Say amen. amen. And so the first platform by which the saints access resurrection power, the power of his resurrection is by believing in and receiving jesus number two the second platform is having an understanding and i'll dwell a bit here tonight having an understanding of the implications of the resurrection it's not enough to know that he resurrected 
you must have a revelation there is an implication to the resurrection of jesus that if understood can release power to the life of the believer here and now hallelujah an understanding of the implication of the resurrection of jesus i'll give you the third and fourth and then we'll go back to the second point are you ready for number three the third platform by which the resurrection power is released to the believer is your willingness to be a witness to that resurrection you cannot experience the resurrection power until you are willing to be a witness to that resurrection four platforms upon which the resurrection power is released to the believers number one believing in and receiving jesus the resurrection and the life number two a thorough understanding of the implication of his resurrection number three your willingness to be a witness of and to that resurrection in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus it says and great grace was upon them all number four what is the fourth platform to release resurrection power engaging the promises of the resurrection by faith engaging the promises there are promises that were connected to the resurrection jesus said many things that will become a possibility to man the believer if and when the resurrection happened now that it had happened you can engage by faith that on account of the truthfulness of the resurrection there are promises that should be at work in my life and your life hebrews chapter 4 1 and 3 it says let us fear less a promise being left us of entering into that rest any of you should seem to come short of it verse 2 he says for unto us was the gospel preached you know what the gospel is now the humanity the death the burial the resurrection ascension and exaltation it was preached unto us as well as unto them but the word preached did not produce profit why not being mixed with faith in them that heard it and then verse 3 says for we which have believed we are the ones who enter the rest not we who heard we which have believed have entered into the rest and he said i have sworn in my wrath that if she enter into my rest although the words were finished from the foundations of the world you see let me tell you ladies and gentlemen no matter how powerful the word is you have to believe and engage by faith to see it deliver hallelujah there is no superstition about enjoying and experiencing the resurrection power of the lord jesus the lord challenged us in the morning as to why there seems to be such an abundance of knowledge but the corresponding authority that should match what we know we are by far short of it and i think pastor isaac emphasized that again i do not believe there is ignorance in the body of christ uh, I think there is no time in history where there is such abundance of knowledge. The challenge in my observation is number one, our knowledge is not organized. There is a random acquisition of knowledge without order. Knowledge in the spirit was supposed to profit if it is arranged sequentially. There are things that should come before others to make sense to the holistic growth of the believer. Are we together? there are things if you learn before others it will corrupt your understanding are we together so there is an order an apostolic order was delivered to the early church and when they walked in keeping with that order they evolved and they became a kind of people powerful a kind of people wise they were witnesses indeed so the average believer is just cherry picking knowledge based on convenience and yet it is not methodically arranged to produce wholesome victory. But I thank God for the gifts that he has placed within the body that is bringing a reordering, a reordering of our spiritual understanding in the name of Jesus Christ.
now let's go to the second platform that will be my emphasis tonight i hope god is helping someone the implication of the resurrection do you know i submit to you that the average believer is totally unaware of the significance of the resurrection of the lord jesus we know instinctively that the resurrection seemed to connote victory but the details as to what it captures and how it matters to my life and your life today many have not been attentive to study and respectfully speaking many preachers have not even paid attention to it you know listen in the kingdom not every truth carries the same value <sighs> Are we together now? Yes. Every truth is valuable, but not every truth carries the same value. There is a value component attached to every body of knowledge. And there are stresses and things that the spirit would emphasize. The same way you prepare a meal. The quantity of rice you put in the pot is not the same quantity of salt you put in the pot. However, both of them are needed. When you fetch a measure of rice and a measure of salt, you are not cooking again, you are killing. <laughs> Am I right on that? And so just because you found truth, you will be surprised that the value of the light you have brought together does not add up to much because in your pursuit, you ignore pillars. Believe what you are hearing. It is true. Mm. Our fathers... And those who have joined the cloud of witnesses today, in truth, there were certain things they did not know. Either because they were not educated or they did not have the privilege of secular enlightenment. But among the many things they knew, they majored on the majors. And from the frailty of their understanding, the worth of what they knew commanded tremendous power. Now we are a generation of knowledge, vast knowledge. But in our pursuit, we have run away from the fundamentals and so we are ever learning the bible says but never coming into the knowledge of the truth so the corresponding authority that should justify our pursuit for knowledge is not there and so the average believer including the preachers are frustrated how can i know so much and yet the sick are not healed in experience how can i know so much there is hardly any scripture you will open that believers will say wow i've never seen it they will only say i've never seen it in this fashion are we together there is abundance of knowledge the average church goer is not in ignorance perhaps the problem may be accuracy of understanding but not ignorance and yet with all of this the proof listen results matter in this kingdom perhaps let me take a minute to emphasize it never downplay results result is how god is glorified ephesians 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus watch this unto good works which god before ordained that we should work in them ephesians 3 and verse 10 says now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of god are we learning john 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified if you truly desire to see jesus glorified he says when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain when Jesus saw a tree that was taken from the earth and did not produce result, as compassionate as he was, he did not pity it. He cursed it. Your result is important for the revelation of Jesus. It gives evidence. It gives validation to the fact that he did not lie. Let's walk for a few minutes. What are the implications of the resurrection? And hear me, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to all you have heard, as you are listening to this, I believe that the power of God will rest upon these words and begin to quicken everything that is dead or dying in our lives. Because the Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, it says the Holy Ghost fell not on all them in the auditorium, on all them that heard it. Hallelujah. Number one, the first implication of the resurrection, according to scripture, 
is that the resurrection was a validation that Jesus was truly the son of God. Romans chapter 1, please give us 2 to 4. The first implication of the resurrection was that it came as a validation that Jesus was truly the son of God. Romans chapter 1, 2 to 4, which he promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Please read the next verse together. Ready? One to read. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection. By his resurrection from the dead, it was a validation indeed that he was a son of God. If Jesus Christ did not resurrect from the dead, there would be no basis for believing in truth. Because I hope you know that Jesus was not the first person who claimed divinity. Read your Bible. There had been many, many sects before that time. Men and women who claimed to be connected to the divine. Jesus had to resurrect as proof. My God, every other religion with all due respect and their founders have graves with bones in it. There is only one grave that is empty. One. One grave. That you will get there and see the grave, but you will not find the bones. He is not here. He is risen. Seated at the right hand of God the Father. The resurrection validated that Jesus was truly the Son of God. I hope you know that Christianity began with the resurrection. Hallelujah. Truly, only the Christian faith has an empty tomb. If there are other empty tombs, the bodies were stolen or relocated archaeologically. But this one, he resurrected and there were unbelievers who witnessed it. The angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it. Let me see who will take me from that stone. And the Bible says the son of the living God resurrected triumphantly. He was not in a rush. He came out triumphantly. Number two, what is the second implication of the resurrection? Are you ready? The resurrection gave credibility to all other words that Jesus spoke. I hope you know Jesus himself prophesied about his death, his burial, his resurrection. If that did not happen, there's no basis for trusting any other thing he said. The resurrection gave credibility to all other words that Jesus spoke. Matthew 17, 5 to 9. Let's hurry up. Matthew chapter 17, 5 to 9. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud, this was at the transfiguration, overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Next verse. The Bible says, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. Uh -huh. And Jesus came and touched them and said, arise, be not afraid. Reading to verse 9. And when he had, they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus only. Uh -huh. And as they came down from the mountain, watch this. Jesus charged them saying, tell the vision to no man until the son of man is risen from the dead. Don't go around telling anybody if I don't resurrect. So today we have the audacity to tell everyone as proof that he rose. He said, tell no man until resurrection happens. Because if resurrection did not happen, your evangelism is useless. The basis of your confidence is that it truly happened. Implication number two. So if Jesus said, I will resurrect and he did, it then means if he tells you, watch this now, that you are light and salt, you can believe him. If he tells you, I am resurrection and life, because he proved it by resurrecting, he proved by his resurrection that indeed he is faithful and true. The Bible calls him full of grace and truth. No guile, no deception. It is based on the awareness of the resurrection. I can place my trust in every other thing he has said. My goodness. What else has he said concerning you? 
Have you checked recently to see what he said concerning you? That I am the light of the world. I am a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. The logos of God. Every truth I find in scripture, I believe it. When men say there is a casting down, for me I say there is a lifting up. Because the one who is responsible for that is faithful and true. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are unseen are eternal i can believe god for anything he tells me whether it makes sense or not every time doubt comes remember the resurrection every time fear comes remember the resurrection if the grave listen the truth died but it only died for three days any good thing that dies in your life cannot be buried it will resurrect back again King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not believe the resurrection, you will not have the faith to believe any other thing he tells you. So God can tell you today that though your beginning be small, that your latter end shall greatly increase. And when the devil wants to sell you doubt, you remember, where was he when the grave was opened? Where was he when the son of the living God came out from Hades? Where was he when the saints, he came as the first fruit of those who had resurrected? He was not meant to be the only one. Are we together? Listen, believers, let's stop being superstitious and become spiritual. Spirituality is based on the truthfulness of scripture. Are we together? Yes. Don't place your faith on superstition. Your audacity is based on the truth of what he said. Now that he's resurrected, I will now believe when he says all power, authority and power has been given unto you. Go ye. So I go with that audacity knowing that God cannot lie. Not that he does not lie. He cannot lie. A lie does not mean an untrue statement, a lie. A lie is anything you do not have the wherewithal to defend. When you make a statement that you do not have the capacity to bring to pass, you lied. So when the Bible says God cannot lie, it means there is an ability within him that insists that all he says comes to pass. The resurrection. Can I tell you? Many believers will not be able to do much for God in this generation because we truly do not believe the words of Jesus. We hope we believe. We think we believe. But in experience, we do not believe. If I ask you, come and collect five million now, you will look at me and sigh me and say, it is well, hallelujah. All those statements are proof that you are not yet sure. But if one of the wealthy people that have been accredited as a billionaire stands here and said out of compassion come and collect 20 million even if you didn't hear well you will first come and say at least i'm here the laxity to act is proof we are not sure no we are not sure we are not sure the character of the spirit of faith is that it is predicated on the soundness of understanding it's not about a blind bold face no do you believe the words of Jesus? The resurrection gives you the basis, the ultimate basis that Jesus is believable. My God, what else has he said concerning you? That should be your next assignment. To find it and to believe it. And said the one who spoke is the resurrection and the life. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And if death has been destroyed, you see that now? I believe him for anything. Listen, the fathers by the grace of God who have done exploits in this kingdom were men who truly believed that God was not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man to repent. The implication number two. Are we learning? Number three. What is the third implication 
of the resurrection. Are you ready? The resurrection is the central theme of the gospel of salvation. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the central theme of the gospel of salvation. 1 Corinthians 15, 17, please. In all your preaching, if you omit the resurrection, you are preaching another faith. In all your teaching, in all your communication of the gospel, you cannot omit the resurrection because the strength of the Christian experience lies in the validity of the resurrection. Please read with me. And if Christ be not raised, it says your faith is in vain. Are we together? And ye are still in your sin. Mm. Romans chapter 10, I like this, from verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, this is the formula for the administration of new life to the be anyone who wants to believe that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead did you hear that not just believe that the grave opened you must believe that god raised him from the dead then thou shalt be saved the next verse says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You must believe that God raised him from the dead. He's alive. He's alive. When you pray to a God who's, who's, who you are not sure whether or not he's dead or alive, is the reason why many people's prayer life is largely a dissipation of energy without conviction. They are not even sure if the one they are praying to hears them. Hallelujah. The centrality of the gospel of salvation is hinged on the resurrection. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8. Have this revelation and watch your life change and shift from level to level. The Bible says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel raised from the dead can i give you number four very quickly the fourth implication of the resurrection the first being that the resurrection was a validation that jesus was truly the son of god second that the resurrection gave credibility to every other word that jesus spoke now we can believe the truth inspired by the word number three the resurrection is the centrality of the gospel of salvation number four the resurrection established the victory of christ write it down please the resurrection established the victory of christ over sin satan death and the grave it was not over satan alone the resurrection established victory over sin Satan, death, and the grave. Please take it down for me. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Hey, same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me resurrection establishing victory over sin dominion over sin dominion over satan dominion over death dominion over the grave the one who will reign in life is the one who understands the implication of dominion across these four dimensions dominion over sin dominion over satan dominion listen if the only thing you have dominion over is sin you are still not free because jesus was sinless and yet satan came to him I hope you know he was sinless before he became sin. <laughs> but there were other things he had to deal with outside of sin. Satan. 
the grave, death. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Let this enter as a revelation. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. When you stand before someone sitting on a wheelchair, it does not make sense to look at someone. There are no, the, the, the medical report is there to tell you this person will never stand again. But then you remember that body was bound and thrown for three days. But the same way he arose, every situation in life that is antichrist can be traced to the cooperation of these four elements. Sin, Satan, the grave. Listen, let me share with you a powerful secret if you want to walk in miracles. Every situation you see that does not reflect the character of Christ only happens because these four elements find expression within it. Sin, Satan, the grave. Are we together? And then death. And there was the rider upon the fourth horse. A pale horse having a pair of balances. And he said his name is death. Death is also a spirit, not a phenomenon. It's a spirit that one day will be tamed and can now be tamed by understanding. The awareness that death is just a random phenomenon that cannot be explained is not accurate. There is the spirit of death that kills. Like every other spirit, they depend on fear to open the door for them. Spirits are helpless except fear opens the door. If fear does not open the door, spirits cannot precede fear. And to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Is someone learning? Hmm. So when you look at any life that does not reflect the glory and the character of the Christ, you are seeing the operation of sin. Who seen that this man was born blind? Go and sin no more. Or you are seeing an operation of Satan himself as a thief. John 10, 10. That the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. You can use his tripartite signature in any life. And no, Satan has visited this family. The cure is the consciousness of the resurrection power. Listen, when Jesus rose from the dead, rose from the grave, it established victory over sin, victory over Satan, victory over the grave, and victory over death. Hmm. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Let me give us one more. Number five. What is the implication of the resurrection? Now watch this. The resurrection today, or perhaps I'll give us two more. The resurrection has allowed anyone who believes in Jesus to be a partaker of his life and his victory. This one is the one that excites my spirit. I hope you know that everything Jesus did was not just for himself nor the father. It was as proof of his love for man. I told you in the morning that the victory that was later credited to Jesus was always his own, but it was his own alone. This is why he relinquished it and came to start again because he wanted to incorporate man in that victory. And the only way to incorporate it, you imagine someone who goes to school and have a PhD for want of expression, but because the PhD is for him alone, then he reverses the process and starts his education again, but signs a hidden contract that everything I'm now getting is not for me alone, it's for me and everyone who believes me. Are we together now? By the time he bags PhD, they suddenly call you from the bush and give you a certificate with PhD. And he said, this is not right. And he says, well, I always had PhD, but I'm, I'm not interested in it being alone. So he relinquished his Godhead and came back and won that same victory. But this time around, it was not him alone. Hmm. Do you understand this now? This is very profound. 
He was always God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness there of the world. And they that dwell therein. So why did he have to come and die? Why did he have to go through all of this? To limit himself and sound very frail and helpless. To the point that Pontius Pilate said, I have power to set you free. He said, no, you cannot have power over me except it is given to you. It is within my power to call a legion of angels. I am submitting myself not because of limitation. There is man. What is man that thou art mindful of? Not the son of man. What kind of vulnerability do you exhibit this way? What is it about man that you are willing to relinquish your being God to walk upon the earth starting as a baby? Growing as a teenager, submitting to your own creation so that now you will be seated together with that man. Listen, the most powerful part of resurrection was not what Jesus did, was who he did it for. Hmm. Let me repeat myself again. The most powerful part of the resurrection story was not what Jesus did. Don't downplay that, but who he did it for. This is what makes us more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is powerful, my God. I am a partaker of his divine nature. Say that after me. One more time. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. Yes, sir. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Please, let's hurry up. 56 and 57. Then we'll go to Ephesians chapter 1. Now, that book, Ephesians chapter 1, is a mystery that I'm praying God will grant us grace to settle and study. Contained within Ephesians 1 and 2 is a deep mystery that controls spiritual power. But let's look at this. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. 57. But thanks be to God, on account of this, which giveth us, say giveth us. It is not something you earn. You see, this is where the balance of self-righteousness and believing that we earn a status in the spirit just on account of the things we do. No. Our fastings and our prayer, watch this now, and all the spiritual activities we engage in, they are only participatory conditions to make good what has been finished in Christ. But it has never been and will never be the basis for the release of power. This is what the fathers knew that our generation has lost. Because there seems to be an accreditation you receive when people see that you are dissipating energy and trying. This is not of the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus fasted. Don't get me wrong. Jesus prayed. There are spiritual activities that build a man's spirit. But when you watch men like Reinhard Bonke, T.L. Osborne, they got to those crusade grounds not with the consciousness of their righteousness. Their entirety was centered on them being partakers. They were obsessed with the revelation of their oneness with Christ. They spoke as men who understood they were one with Christ. We stand the risk of getting into legalism that will lead to powerlessness and frustration if we remove Jesus Christ out of the equation of our growth and begin to labor by ourselves. There were people who tried it before us. At least we can learn from the prophets of Baal. There is no sacrifice any believer has made that is greater than what the prophets of Baal did. I mean, for those guys to be crying from morning till night, then to lacerate themselves, it was not persecution. It was their act of yieldedness. What yieldedness is greater than that? And Elijah said, this is not how it is done. Come, let me show you. The first thing was he restored the altar of the Lord. You see that there was sacrifice as part of it. So I'm not negating sacrifice. But the basis was not the sacrifice the basis was not just the fire. It was an ordinance he fulfilled. Because even after the sacrifice, the fire still did not fall. So what really brought the fire? And he looked unto heaven. And fire fell. And consumed everything. Hallelujah. Those who know God. Understand that nothing of yourself truly in experience can bring you to a point of stature where you represent the purposes of God, not in the flesh. Now, 
those who have seen God move across their generations are people who with the simplicity of childlike faith have come into a thorough understanding of the fact that his resurrection power, the consciousness of the victory that he wrought. I hope you know it was not Jesus and someone else that defeated Satan. No. The assistance of men stopped when he got to the cross. From the cross, no man helped him again. They helped him to get there. Simon of Cyrene helped him to carry the cross. But the moment he got there, it was a lonely journey. And only the second Adam went down to Hades. And the cohorts of hell were upon him, the Bible says. And the Bible says he shook, he made a public display of them. And he went himself to Satan. Give me the keys that Adam gave you. He collected the keys. Alpha, Omega. That is not a name. It's a title that was end. Alpha and Omega does not just mean beginning and the end. Who ended it? Who began it? That is why no, God does not share that name with man. No. You are not a partaker of that name. You are not Alpha. You are not Omega. No. There are names he shares with men. Light. Salt. He is light. You are light. But not Alpha and Omega. Because it was not a gift. It was end. Are we together now? Those are the names that brand him in a class all by himself. My God. Partakers of his divine nature, according as his divine power, have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Watch this. Through the knowledge of him, is that true? Who has called us into glory and virtue. The Bible says, whereby are given to us great and exceeding precious promises, that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. I may not look like it, but it's a spiritual reality. My oneness with Christ, giving me the basis. So now, when you meet Satan and ask him, the list has increased. Jesus I know, Paul I know. He will not stop there. Joshua Selman I know. Now, listen. I hope you know that it's not a status that was end. No, it's a revelation that enlisted you there. The sons of Sceva did not know this. They went in the strength of the flesh and the demons taught them that it doesn't work that way. Elohim Madonai Elohim Madonai we don't have the time but let me give you this as an assignment read the entire Ephesians chapter 1 the whole 23 verses focus from verse maybe let's look at verse 1 to 8 then we'll look at 11 we don't have all the time but it's important for you to understand this the revelation of what happened now let me say this I hope you know that Jesus himself said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. Are we in agreement on that? There were many things Jesus taught the apostles, but there were other things he did not teach them. But he said they needed to know it for their holistic development. It was the man, Paul, who came and became a continuation of those things by the Spirit. Imagine the Gospels without the Pauline epistles. There are things about God you would never know. It was not Jesus that taught us our positional advantage. It was not Jesus that taught us the implication of our oneness. You see, the Gospels are the foundation. Eyewitness accounts. But the Pauline epistles give revelation as to the reality of the believer's status today on account of what Christ has done. Please give it to us. Ephesians 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord. All right, let's go. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, household of David, who had blessed me, had blessed us with how many? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him, 
before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love verse 5 having predestinated us unto adoption of children by jesus to himself according to the good pleasure of his will keep reading he says to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace uh-huh wherein he had abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence now jump to verse 11 for sake of time in whom we also have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will we have obtained an inheritance you read that right to 23 it was on account of this that paul said i paul on account of this i bow my knees to our lord jesus christ from verse 16 that the lord himself will grant you access to the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him he says the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light enlightened that you may know number one the hope of his calling number two the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints number three the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power when did that happen which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead there was power that was exerted and paul is saying i am praying that you will understand the extent of power that took Jesus from Hades, brought him back to earth, took him to heaven and kept him there. Because if you have that understanding, it will take you from anywhere to anywhere. The same power that took Jesus from the grave and placed him in a position of authority can take any man from the village and place you to the nations. The same power. The same power that is the power that turns weak men to strong men that is the power that gives men a testimony in their generation that is the power that gives men a voice even though they do not come with any advantage the resurrection power it is called ah fear not O warm jacob an ability of the spirit is able to rest upon you on account of resurrection that can transit an ordinary man in ministry in business you have this consciousness you know you are not ordinary and you are not just speaking pentecostal gibberish this is a reality sealed by god's integrity that you cannot be ordinary partakers of his divine nature this is a revelation that i found and still continue to press into it by grace when we come into an awareness of the extent of our oneness resurrection has brought me into that position everything that christ purchased and received in redemption was for me he's brought me to be a partaker of it whether i will walk in the reality of it in my lifetime or not depends on my willingness and my understanding but to know this for a fact that no believer ordained by God is ordained to a life of weakness and limitation and I believe that there is a generation that will press into this it, it, it may start slowly like a rain coming you see it will start trickling one by one and there are mockers who will laugh at our zeal but gradually energized by the spirit and the sincerity of our pursuit one day we will enter a reality that would demonstrate god to this generation in a way that has not been seen god is raising mighty men in this place God is raising people of fire in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till I look just like him. He won't stop, he won't stop 
till my life looks like him listen you may not know what is happening to you in this conference until you step out of that place you will look at someone and say god bless you it's only that it will not sound the way it sounded before again there is an understanding that has strengthened you by that simple pronouncement god bless you you will swing open the two lift gates of men's destiny they will return back and say what happened and you will tell them this is the power of light that the light shineth in darkness the duration of darkness does not affect the strength of light once it shows up that is the end of darkness hallelujah no matter how dark it has been but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light he said he made two great lights one to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night listen i want you to have be obsessed with the revelation the consciousness of your oneness with christ whilst you are sitting i want you to see yourself that when he hung upon that cross i told you in the morning there were two people on that cross I'm not talking of the two thieves. I'm talking of me and him. Mm. When he resurrected, it was not only him. I was raised up with him. When he was exalted, your Bible says we are seated with him. Now You can choose to believe it or not. Seated with him. And that is the position of dominion. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand that means anybody who is seated at the right hand your enemies must become your footstool do you believe this yes, sir. by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrected say i am one with christ please shout it say i am one with christ i am one with christ exalted with christ yes sir it's a mentality it's a consciousness you must carry regardless your background regardless the bills regardless the reality god does not listen listen a weak mentality cannot take nations for jesus no a defeated mentality will be a liability to the kingdom you will waste the investment of the kingdom in your life if you do not contend for transformation it says let this mind be in you do you know that Jesus never talked about where he came from? Read your Bible. Jesus did not have time discussing where he came from or the limitations connected to that place. When Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, no, 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 don't insult Nathaniel. He's not wrong. Except that because the last thing that came out of Nazareth, Samson, he didn't last. Nazarenes did not have longevity of impact. Something will bring them down. And Nathaniel said, let's not waste our time following a man who will not last. And he said, he's a sincere man, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. He's speaking out of sincerity, except that this Nazarene who has come is different. And while it is true that he spent only 33 years and a half, my goodness, he replicated himself in many. Today he has brought many sons into glory by adoption the mystery of adoption we have become extensions of his possibilities here and now our challenge now is to contend for light and understanding and to receive an engracing of the spirit that empowers us to represent him as witnesses a witness is a false witness until he has an evidence an evidence is a token of truthfulness it brings an end to all arguments the kingdom experience was never supposed to be heard alone. It was supposed to be heard and seen. Please say heard, heard and seen. You don't just hear that God is good. You see that he is good. You don't just hear that he can save. You will see that he can save. Our generation is tired of hearing what God can do. 
here comes the emergence of men through enlightenment that will be demonstrators and validators of the speakings of God. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria, the Bible says, and preached Christ unto them. Verse 6 says the people gave heed with one accord to the things that Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Not just hearing. We have heard that God can change a man's life. We have heard that God can change SS to AA. We can hear that God can give an innocent child who was not there when his parents met to bring him. He can give him a chance to live a responsible life. If you say God is love, don't just say it, show it. The manifestation of healing is beyond saying a man is powerful. It is a letter from heaven to men. God is love. There needs to be a restoration of proof, genuine proof that dumbfounds principalities and powers. And ladies and gentlemen, in a bit of my study about revivals, and I can tell you with all humility, I've studied a bit about the move of God. I don't know anything. We're all students. I don't know everything. We're learning. But the bits that I've found, every man who came into an understanding of the victory of Christ, alongside the consciousness of their oneness and their positional advantage they live like gods upon the earth there are children who misbehave without fear because of the consciousness of the kind of parents they have you are angry at their misbehavior yet you are limited by the status of their parents and they are aware so they keep misbehaving are we together Something happens to the believer when you are conscious of the spiritual heritage. This is true. I have met many demons and many spirits in the realm of the spirit. By the privilege of what I do, I have seen attacks. I have seen the arsenals of darkness, but I have seen the victory that can be wrought in Christ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do not mistake in this generation for noisemakers. It is not noise. Our audacity is not anything derived from ourselves. It is a call and a passion from the spirit because God is insisting on this generation that will reveal from Nigeria and Africa to the globe a portrait of true apostolic Christianity. It is true. We may not be able to import technology yet. We cannot boast of that. We may not be able to boast of as much intellectual prowess from a global standpoint, but there is one inheritance we have, the reality of the spirit life. And we will sell it to the nations and reveal Jesus in a way that has not been seen again. History books should not close. Remove the full stop. There is a generation continuing that story. Remove the full stop. If you came here for this conference tonight, I want you to know that you did not just come. It's a solemn assembly. It's a clarion call from the Spirit. It's a sign that there is a place for you in this prophetic program. When I sat back there, all through the ministration, you saw me just sitting quietly. These were the contemplations in my heart. Every day, I keep seeing the formation is happening. Yes. After four months come the harvest. It may not look like it, but from Lagos to Abuja to Jos to Ghana, we are beginning to see the formation. There is a spirit driving that formation that cannot be stopped by any man. No, I will build my church. Some of you are here. The quickening of the spirit is what brought you here. And whilst you are seated, very shortly in a few minutes we are going to allow that wind there is a quickening there is a quickening listen there is a place and a portion for you in destiny let me say something that may bless you every name you see in the bible is not just the name of a believer the names you see recorded in the bible are spiritual pathways 
that produce certain kinds of believers that make up this army did you hear what i just said so when you say abraham abraham is not just the name of a man abraham is the name given to a certain spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a certain kind of warrior esther is not just the name of a woman who married a king esther is a description of a way the holy spirit can produce champions out of men one of the ways you know that it is god who is training you is that you will find a parallel to what you are becoming in scripture so you can begin your work with god and later find out that esther is becoming even though your name may be Yemisi, but in the training of the spirit you are finding out that esther is evolving from that training abraham is evolving from that training you see that now elijah is evolving from that training peter the training of elijah is not the training of esther but it's still the same god training them we are not doing a pastor's conference here but let me teach you this one of your first assignment is to discern where god is taking you so that you know where to submit yourself for training because if elijah mentors esther esther will be called elijah not esther are we together now it matters who midwives you're becoming just because i am spiritual does not mean i can raise every army to go. no 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 there is an allocation given to me based on the election of grace of the kind of people i can train if i insist on training joseph i may produce someone else who may not be a king in egypt let's leave this one for i'm sure maybe another a pastor's call. but this night our assignment is to contend to come into the fullness of that resurrection power the reason why ruth became ruth was because of the counsel and the mentorship that came from naomi the pain of naomi was part of the the, the dimension she got the wisdom to advise ruth you cannot train root until you have lost to a certain degree. There is a level of compassion that only comes. I hope you know that not every pain is a loss. There is something in the spirit called the gift of pain. Now, most believers will not want to hear this. This teaching you are hearing is not for babes. There is a dimension of pain that comes to you as a gift from God. <laughs> We'll find somewhere to pray an angel comes to meet a young virgin and she says you are highly favored go and read your bible show me anything there that looks like our description of favor and then highly on top of it you show me what about mary's life and johnny demonstrates favor she didn't even write any book and at the end she had to submit on the day of pentecost as if she was not his mother no extra privilege was given she had to join them with humility to be filled with the holy ghost so what is the favor about you will understand another side of favor when you get to heaven you see you will know that what we call scars are blessings in the spirit so the bible says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed a day will come what looks like a tragic situation for household of david it will become the tray upon which your trophy will rest on listen there is a clarion call that can be made in destiny and only men who have pain and a certain scar will file up if you are too innocent and void of certain scars you cannot mentor a generation you will be too innocent and you will not be able to <laughs> help those under the anointing i see a wind just moving right now this is what i see wind blowing Can I tell you? Huh. Jesus did not just die. He was pierced across many places. 
and the blood that flowed from him flowed through the pain it was not only the blood that flowed there are many other things that flow from it I'm digressing by the spirit to tell someone everything that has happened in your life that looks like a disappointment there is a track record in the spirit you are building this is the reason why when we do not understand God we say God is greater though he slay me why did my loved one die though he slay me why did I lose out in the business how are you preparing for a conference that is so spiritual with prayer investments and within two hours it is so gutted by fire where were the angels that keep watch over the saints it is only foolish people that think like that in the economy of heaven the way testimonies are built is like the way food is prepared you don't carry a whole yam from the farm and throw it in the pot you slice it if you see someone slicing chicken and yam it does not look pleasant keep being patient listen let me show you what i just said we're a generation that is obsessed about proof philippians 3 and verse 10 i just sense in my spirit we're going to pray honestly i still see this wind blowing there are people who came here there is a portion for you in prophecy and there are mantles mantles graces you may be ordinary finally that grace finds you and turns you into a mighty warrior let's read together that i may know him what do i need to know about him number one the power of his resurrection number two hold on hold on he did not say his suffering he said the fellowship what is the fellowship of his suffering the sharing it is a there is a kind of honor that god gives men by allah oh dear it's called the fellowship of his suffering there are seven crowns that will be given to the saints in revelation one of it is called the matthias crown not everyone gets that not every believer gets that the matthias crown is a testimony of their resilience hebrews 11 the bible says others died rejecting an opportunity to be delivered because they look forward to a better resurrection Let me give you the last one what is the sixth implication of his resurrection the resurrection gives every believer in christ hope beyond death hope beyond the grave the resurrection the resurrection you lost your mother and the spirit of god is telling me to tell you this six point is for you this is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Your mother went to be with the Lord. A woman who loved God and was a woman of prayer. And since she died, you have been crying, you have been wounded. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, this is the answer to the prayer. That the consciousness of the resurrection, watch this now. It gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death. Hope beyond the grave. Hope beyond death. Can, can I tell you? when we press for long life it's not because of the fear of death it's to give us an opportunity to serve the purposes of god long enough but whether in life or death we have assumed a status that is always victorious hope beyond the grave <laughs> though our outward man perish the inward man is renewed it is the reason why we spend our lives and we are spent for him listen I come from the north and there is an indoctrination that is given to ex especially extremist sects. The moment you recruit them, it is not their assignment to teach them. It is the worth of spending yourself and being spent. 
it becomes a joy. The moment, the first assignment that produces terrorists is to let them see that death is profitable. Not killing their own death. So the first assignment is to indoctrinate them to come to a point where they are comfortable and look forward to it. And a man who does not fear death is a dangerous man. Are we together? Yeah. So a man will look at you to your face and while you are talking, you don't know me. I will call my father and he said, you are nonsense. I'm already a dead man. You are speaking rubbish. <laughs> An army stands with a gun and says you will die and they laugh while they are blowing them up. They have no fear of it. The resurrection power teaches us that the frame of our living is not confined to the three-dimensional realm. Here's how the apostle puts it. For me to live is Christ. And then he says to die. How do you call death gain? Why have you been calling it loss? The one you prayed for and you said recover from cancer. I declare the healing power of Jesus. Let it come upon you. When the person died, you said, God, why? Yet you call death gain. Do you cry when you gain? Talk to me. Every businessman looks forward to gain. Profit is, the, is largely the intent behind the business. Mm -hmm. Someday, one glorious morning, maybe while some of us are on crusade grounds and all of us are having conferences like this, there will be a massive activity upon the earth. In a moment, the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, the only thing that will be left is this Bible produced by Zondervan will be gone. Then we will have the privilege to be joined. We will see men who we read about. <laughs> I will see my grandfather who labored for the gospel till he died. We will have the privilege of seeing people today. And there will be a glorious reunion. Thanks to the resurrection. We live our lives void of fear. Because we already know the end of all things. It is not a call to careless living. No. We have a responsibility to contend for longevity, to give this body the time to host our spirits while we serve God. But at the back of it, the believer is always in advantage. Did you hear what I'm saying? This is very important. Most Christians don't want to hear what I just said now. You say, no, 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 no. Rather reject it. I will reject it. But behind... In the next 10, 20 years, there will be a transition in the church in Africa. It's true. If Christ tarries, a time will come too. They will call us fathers. And whether you like it or not, our children will edit what today we know and call revelation. Then if Christ tarries, one day we will stand and look at earth, having conquered nations and territories, spending our lives and having been spent for his majesty. We will stand and with the salute of a warrior hmm. till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me home it's here in the love Hear me. What is your response? I'm wrapping up. What is your response to all that you have heard today? Number one. God is depending on you. To take his resurrection power. To the nations. Will you fail. If it depends on you. Will you fail. If it depends on you. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. With great power, gave the apostles witness. The witness does not have to be on the pulpit. The witness for some of us will be in administration, will be in business. When I saw the plan, Pastor Shola, you get the plan of the church. And they said it was the architects in the church that came together. I said, these are witnesses. Listen. I preached a message called Redefining the Coming Revival. 
The revival that is coming will not happen the way we expect. There will be many disappointments. Because our expectation in the coming revival is that Elijah is coming. It is not Elijah alone who is coming. The revival will bring Esther. The revival will bring Nehemiah. The revival will bring Ruth. The revival will bring David. Make sure you don't throw away David because you are only looking for Elijah. There will be a formation of an army distributed by the wisdom of God. Others will go to commerce and the economy. Bringing for us the wealth that funds the end time program. Are we together? We're having a discussion this time in Europe right now. A lot of Arab nations are buying the auditoriums. And they are not allowing for Christian programs again. And we don't just sit down and say, oh God, we thank you. We must trust God to bring us to a point of economic empowerment where men become like nations. Our orientation has changed. It is not carnality. It's an orientation that is derived from passion to see his kingdom come. So we are not apologetic about contending for kingdom wealth. God has purified our orientation. We understand the true purpose and value for money. So among the many blessings I'll pray for you is financial increase. If you like, receive it. If you like, don't receive it. Unapologetically, as part of the tools required for kingdom come. Hallelujah. We're preparing for a conference. And when they send the bills, minus insurance, I said, ah, God, why now? Why, why is the church like this? All this unnecessary prayer can be solved when the right witnesses in the marketplace arise. Every time God's people focus on God, Satan will manipulate the economy to distract their concentration. When Jesus was teaching, the man in power sent people to come and challenge him in the area of finances. You are teaching and yet you've not paid your task. Jesus did not say, leave me alone. He said, no. The way to find peace on earth is to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But if you don't have what to give to Caesar, it will interrupt your fellowship with God. Are we together? Will you serve God better if you stop paying rent and get into a house that can give you peace? You can shut down for three days. Do you think it's the will of God? Hallelujah. We are trusting God for an emergence of Esther's. Women who will, the assignment of Esther is similar to the assignment of Jezebel. Jezebel is a corruption of the Esther pattern because both Jezebel and Esther only function when they get to the palace. Jezebel is a spirit that cannot function until she sits with people in power. Her assignment is to manipulate those who control territories and domains. It's not a woman, it's a pattern. The same way Esther is beyond a woman, a little slave girl exalted by the spirit, the only warrior in the book of Esther never took a sword, yet her man died. Never took a sword, yet the purposes of God were preserved. I'm saying that because someone, that is your assignment. So the master's and PhD you are getting is not a waste. It is an Esther formation. That is the disadvantage of everyone being trained by Elijah. Elijah does not have the ointment to give Esther. No. It is Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins. He's the one who gives the oil she keeps rubbing to be accepted by Ahasuerus. Now you read your Bible from the lens of prophecy and all you will see is the blueprint of the prophetic army. So when you see a training happening somewhere beyond your scope of grace, you don't fight it. You appreciate that formation while focusing on your own. Are we? Naomi is as valuable as, as Elijah in training Ruth and in training Elijah. The charismatism may differ but do not reject Naomi's advice. You may be corrupting the race that bets Jesus. Yes. 
Hallelujah. My time is up. Let's pray. And I'll speak over your life by the privilege of God's grace. Listen. One of the things that God is restoring in the body of Christ, I didn't have time to teach that. One of the ways we access this power is through the mystery called humility. Is very few people in the body of Christ are truly humble. And it is a weakness in our human nature. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is a weakness enshrined in human nature. Do you know why? Because the average person who grew in Africa has been wounded emotionally. We will not admit it. But the average upbringing, the upbringing of the average African is in despair, complex. So when we evolve, the pressure, you see, we mix our weaknesses and limitations with the operation of the, of, of the Holy Spirit and make it look as if he's the one making us behave like that. It's a lie. The character of the Christ has been vetted and proven from Scripture. Are we together now? Yes. So a man who came from a background where he had to struggle to eat, the day he makes his first hundred million, he will rub it on any face he sees. And if that happens to be your face, sorry for you. Are we together? Now, he's rubbing it on your face is as a, a false way of trying to be healed from the limitations of yesterday. The cure is the understanding of your positional advantage. That we are called sons of God is a noble position. No other honor is greater than that. Perhaps if there is any honor that comes close to that, is being called a friend of God. Hmm. Because the advantage of a friend of God is number one, access to the secrets of God. Number two, God will never allow you delve to perdition. He will rather cut short your life. It is the honor as a friend of God. Let's pray. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Prayer point number one. Father, the grace to walk in your resurrection power, I receive it right now. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. The grace. Shame Saman Lazabaras Kaprake Pareko Sia Barato Sibes. Grate Kaparetas Kabalanda Shalama Sibeheriata. Krakata Balakata Vraska Bereda Bekate Brandaga. Rapedi Shana Savanda Braska Beledo Shalabariata. Go ahead and pray. I desire to walk in your resurrection power. Shaibada Shalantas Kaprakata de Belekate Pakata. Take a minute to pray. Shapraske Beresko Bashalanda Kabariata. Kratakata Berekate Braskata Brekate Beleketa. Krapeka Barantos Koto Brende Beleketiata. This is the generation that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to lend me just three or five minutes. As a shola, please, can I, um, can I borrow your worshiper to help me sing that song? Sometimes I'm limited by, I think I need to learn Yoruba. Find a Yoruba teacher for me. Hongbe mi fo, hongbe mi sare. Amolu ambe lori ayemi Ombe mi fu Ombe mi sare Amolu ambe lori ayemi Ombe mi fu Ombe mi sare Ombe mi sare
praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, please hear me. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, among the many things that he would later tell me in my encounter is that the light that came from him to me he said to every nation and every region I will send you to that light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting must be someone in that meeting that that same light needs to rest upon and it's a covenant that I've had with God that every time he grants us grace by his mercy to represent him in any capacity I have remained true to that call to allow that light to rest producing faith producing audacity multiplying your kingdom influence and your relevance and like our people sang giving you speed it says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah hmm. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to Deborah's, to Elijah's, to Gideon's, everyone who is part of this prophetic formation. The grace that drives you to the place of prayer, the grace that drives you to the place of consecration, the grace that drives you to the place of revelation, the grace that drives you to the place of faith and audacity. Let it come upon you right now. 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 Right now. Hear me. Our generation will alter a spectacular display of signs and wonders possibilities imported by the spirit i'm praying for someone here maybe not everyone but someone here mantles don't leave the earth to heaven where are the mantles that were on kenneth Hagin? the mantles that were on smith wigglesworth tl osborne i pray that by mercy may that grace find someone tonight may that grace find someone tonight May that grace find someone tonight. Hear me. For some of us, the factor limiting our becoming is that our spirit man is weak. Let me pray for you. For the spirit of prayer and supplication. The grace that quickens men to travel until they evolve like molting from an old weak version of you into a superior version with power may that grace rest on someone's prayer altar may that grace rest on someone's prayer altar i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder tapped me and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed and i saw a lamb sitting upon a throne as though he had been slain having seven eyes and seven horns whatever that eye means to you whatever dimension of revelation you need to come into i'm praying for you may your eyes be open may your eyes be open may your eyes be open hallelujah now please listen the bible says after four months then comes the harvest 
no matter how sincere a farmer you are the harvest does not happen immediately this is an encouragement for someone who is in the school of the spirit it's taking time for you to become don't rush the process no don't announce yourself when god is still training you don't say somebody i mentored is already doing ministry that is none of your business the nature of your assignment de de defines how long you stay in the school of the spirit we remain students forever but just because you are called does not mean you have been sent no when you are called you are called to jesus then you are sent to the nations you can be genuinely called but not yet sent i'm praying for someone the staying power to remain with god in that training it may be a lonely place the staying power to remain in the cave of adulam esther you will get to the throne but not immediately be patient it took her one year under the mentorship of Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins i pray for you no matter how long it will take to stay with the spirit until you evolve until you become a witness and a warrior indeed let grace be supplied to you finally hear me there are prophetic worshipers that must arise see let me tell you i truly believe that every grace that visited this place whether invited or not they did not just visit they came to deposit something and to leave notice the kind of people god handpicked you see there were faces i did not see in the bill but they are here i know that we all with humility came to receive but the truth is that there was something you see god knows the grace combinations he placed in every man and god handpicked these graces unique to the needs of the people and sent the people here there is a grace apostle Iren is carrying a grace combination there is a grace combination pastor isaac is carrying pastor sholan his wife carrying minister becker's carrying p daniel's carrying are we together now moses please carrying don't just be conscious it doesn't matter the person preaching no that under this cloud there are some of you that god is taking a little here a little there because the nature of your assignment it, it, it desires certain grace combinations i stand by the privilege of grace and i'm praying that every grace that has stood on this altar including the grace of pastor sam Adeyemi, under this building which is prophetic they said it in the morning the nehemiah anointing the grace that builds we agree as the church of the lord jesus christ that in the mighty name of jesus every grace and god is able to make all grace all grace all grace not some grace the kind of grace needed to walk in the reality of resurrection receive it now so shall it be in the name of jesus I feel guilty for not making an altar call will you spare me one minute pastor okay he's coming to make it okay that's fine praise the name of the lord oh no 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 he, he, he made one before sir but it's okay oh, he, it's oh okay. he's already made one. Yeah, oh no that's fine no, apostle if you are led to sir, no ethically once i preach i don't rest until i make an altar call for the sake of one person but if he's made it that's fine let me encourage everyone as much as you can by the grace of god i'm lending my voice with pastor shola tomorrow's service please make the sacrifice i'm sure that you will come and announce it and that includes those fallen online fallen by television better is the end of a thing the bible says than the beginning thereof you have endured the finisher's anointing is on you grace to push through to the final session the lord bless you in jesus name Praise God. Now, may I say what I've been saying again? Those of you that like to run, wait. We have less than two minutes to leave. Please obey what I'm saying. All of you run, try to run home, wait. In two minutes, we'll be out of this place. Just wait. Amen. 
God, there's one more thing I just want to do. In two minutes, we'll be out. Just wait wherever you are. The meeting holds 7 a.m. at Police College tomorrow. It's an open air meeting. It's going to be awesome. Apostle touched on something. Minister Moses, please thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Apostle, I will say more of this tomorrow because of time. But there was something Apostle touched on towards the end. Many people that we did not plan to have here have been here. And Apostle mentioned that grace. We are using this place because somebody used this place. I did not know that Apostle Aaron would be coming for this meeting. And it was because he had a massive meeting here that we got inspired when the issue happened on Wednesday to take. If Apostle Aaron didn't use this place, this time would not come to our hearts. He did not come here by accident tonight. Even if he just one sentence of blessing. Let's close the service that way. I know the weight this man carries and we will not just let him go like that and let the anointing go. So we will not let him go. So let's welcome together the one and only apostle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Were you blessed by that word? I don't intend to take your time. There's been such a deposit of grace tonight and in all the sessions. I just want to say this. For everyone, I thank God for an emphasis, a balance on the faith message, or let me say a re-emphasis on the pain dimension of faith. And we're talking about, we're talking about the resurrection and just the hope that we're all going to receive new bodies in heaven. There will be beauty, no deficiency everywhere. There would be only one seeming deficiency in heaven, that even the resurrected body of Jesus still has scars as an eternal witness that death indeed was conquered for life to emerge. And as I was looking at that building, you know, uh, I honestly, I was trying to be sad, but I wasn't. Because I know what God did. I know what God did. There were many people who didn't know about this ministry before. It took fire. God, see, God used that fire to announce this ministry. I'm telling you. To announce this ministry, it's a forceful announcement. And this, this ministry had the kind of publicity that no other conference prior ever had. It took fire. It took pain. Hallelujah. And we're here to celebrate what God is about to do. Please find a way to be a part of it. I am here because the Lord instructed me to be a part of what God is about to do with the new building. And if you are here, understand and listen to the instructions of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. Now, for all those who are not coming around because of children, tomorrow is a short service. We'll finish maybe before 10, before the sun rises. That's why it's early in the morning. Please, don't leave anybody at home tomorrow. Everybody... We make a remain for children. Right now, they are working on the field and setting up screens and everything. And there. So it's going to be awesome. I'm asking everybody, extend our invitations to everybody around. God bless you. May Lord bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Nothing missing. God bless you. Can the protocol lead the minister? We've been blessed in the previous sessions. This particular evening is going to be an appointment with destiny. I'm excited to welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Shalao Shumakinde, who is a senior pastor and the head of ministries, Pastor Abigail Oshumakinde. My name is Joshua Ademo I'm a pastor in the household of David, and I'm excited about what God is doing in this particular conference. I would want you to be ready to receive all that God has in store for you. Lay hold of everything God has in store by faith. Enjoy the praise and worship. Listen to remarkable testimonies that will stir up your faith to receive from God and more importantly, make sure you pay very rapt attention to the word. God is going to be reaching out to you in a very special way. And the result? Testimonies. Testimonies on every side. 
we bless God for the opportunity to be reaching out to the world to do these great things for his kingdom. Please make sure that you get everything that you can get tonight. I'll see you after the service. God bless you. Whatever you see on your way out that is on the floor, just pick it. Let's make it very easy on the cleaners, please. Thank you. And those who are praying on the altar, don't stand the altar in any way, please. Don't spill.